It's up to me now. It's always up to you. No. <laughs> I'm going to go you've to number on, one. Uh, yeah, you've been on sample seven and three. Today's number one. Today's number one. Yes. But I'm not seeing anything. Uh, you probably need to zoom out because you're super close. Ah. Yeah. And just look around and try to find something good. And then I'll be back in like one minute. This one's sponge spicule, right? That's a sponge spicule, yes. People are listening to me now? Uh, I believe so. What? Wait, let me double check. Click on the, uh, yeah. When you talk, they can hear it. Yeah. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Comments? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, hey, it's in her kitchen. You can just do this. Now they can watch me look at the laptop while you look at the screen. <laughs> I don't know why I feel there that's better, right? Yeah, that looks pretty good. There you go. It was very ugly. Oh, was it? Like, I, I had no definition. <laughs> See, that's my biggest fear. It's got a lid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just dump some in the SEM. We'll see how it goes. Oh my god, no. <laughs> no, no. Hello, Mean Machine Rex. How are you doing? Look, Laura's in charge of the SEM. So this one's covered. I don't want it anymore. But which one's this one? I feel like we've seen it before. Platessa Zeglerai. Platessa. Hi, Bluesy. You just switched from Bob Ross to Diatom's Attack. Yeah. Uh, I will do my best to Bob Ross the diatoms and um, Laura's gonna do her impression of Bob Ross as well uh. 
Do you know Bob Ross? <laughs> yes, I do. I watched it when I was little. <laughs> can you can you give us an example? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> can you do it in Spanish? I don't think I can do an impersonation. No? No. Can Just you? Just like, what we have here is a happy little diet song. <laughs> We're just going to dapple a few happy little diatoms here on the stage. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this one's says in Bella? In Sinema. Oh, my God. Because of the ends? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's how you tell. Also, I can just tell from the shape, but... Um, because of the belly, right? Yeah. This one? Well, yeah. And Sinema look a little bit different to me. I don't know. Just eyeballing it. But if you look at the valve, if you look at the terminal ends of the raphe, the terminal ends of the raphe will show you that, that it they deflect ventrally, which means that it's N Sinema. Or, as I usually tell my students, it's making a poopy face. Uh -huh. It's like this. Okay, let's look for it. I got a bad grade in my class is what happened to it. And then it made a poopy face. <laughs> okay, this part, right? Uh, yep, you can't really even see it very well from the inside. On the outside, it's a lot ob more obvious. Um, mean Machine Rex wants to know, why are they called diatoms? Do you know? Why are they called diatoms? I don't know. You don't? No. Well, we're all going to learn something then. Do you know? Of course. Oh. Atom is the word for part, and die means two. Two and parts? diatoms means two parts. Ah. And it's because their valves come apart. Yeah, yeah. They are disarticulated into two valves that are completely separate. So their name just comes from, uh, from the fact that they have two parts. Sometimes people come from like a chemistry perspective and they're used to the word diatomic, like a diatomic, or they say dia Two atoms. diatomic, something like that. They pronounce um. it differently, uh, but it, it's uh, to the molecules, right? Uh -huh. so. Well, it makes sense now that you explained it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to make sense of the diatoms for everybody. Yes. Right. There are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. <laughs> These diatoms had some happy little accidents, and they landed on my SEM machine. Happily coated in gold. Very fancy, though. Uh, Covered yeah. in gold and everything. I am the King Midas of diatoms. <laughs> just touch them, and <laughs> they, they turn magically turn gold. to gold. And then I stuff them in a vacuum. Hey, Commander Shafard, hello. Yeah, the chemistry thing is pretty much what people usually uh, think of. And uh, since Laura is running the SEM, I can be my own moderator. It's my favorite part. Because I already moderate Pacific Plankton's channel. Hey, and she's here. Hello, Pacific Plankton. You were streaming birds this morning, right? No, I didn't stream any birds this morning. Oh, I thought, I don't know. I was looking at the birds. I woke up to birds, uh -huh. but I didn't actually put any in the uh, camera. Okay. I thought about it. I had a meeting. Um, I had to get in for a meeting with the German people. Mm. So, um, and I was running around the lab looking for stuff when I would normally be looking at birds, birds. but what we saw out the window at the lab. Worth it? <laughs> there's plenty of cool birds right outside the window. And if I'd have brought my camera in, I could have streamed right out the lab window mm -hmm. or just gone outside and the lab window and sat there with my camera. For a little while. There were some really cool birds out there. Hopefully they'll stick around and then maybe I can come back and, uh, to campus tomorrow or on Wednesday, do a little stream from campus. It's been raining, so yes, yes. Um, this morning I was worried about putting my microphone outside, so that's part of the reason why I didn't. But do I think it. on Wednesday there's no rain. Yeah, probably. But the um, 
the birds were super loud this morning, like super loud. And um, I was trying to find like an upstairs place that I could stream out of a window, mm-hmm. but uh, there's not really any good ones. Um, my daughter's room just looks to the neighbor's house and our bedroom looks out onto the street. So, and I don't want to like, you know, broadcast out onto the street. So, oh, uh, JRS? yeah, that's me. Uh, Did I hide June Lake? I don't know. Yellowstone? Uh, it might be under student projects. I moved them, sorry. I was June, trying to clean up. Yes. <laughs> I was trying to clean up the folder system a little. Today is 17th. Oh, Pacific Plankton's driving home. She was out collecting plankton. And Lucy said they saw some birds in the morning. Probably not from my house, though. And drive safely, Pacific. You know, don't get in an accident trying to look at diatoms on your phone. Uh, Boxio says that's an awesome photo. The and one I took? Yeah, I think they're talking about yours. Thank you. <laughs> and then uh, there's some person here named Marta Gosa. That's my call. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and they said there is nothing wrong with having a tree, diatoms in this case, as a friend from another Ross. Yeah. Is this one Anitia? <laughs> Don't drive in mod. Exactly. That one, no. Sorella? Yes. That is a Sorella. They're just huge. Yeah. Um, in the old days, that would be called Campylodiscus. But ah. it was recently moved to Sorella. And I believe it's modern name, because it used to be, when it was Campylodiscus, it used to be Campylodiscus cilia uh, apiculata, was the variety or subspecies. And then when they moved it to, sorry, Sematopleura cilia, Epiculata was the, I guess it's a variety name. And then um, when they moved it into Sororella, it created problems. And so they had to use a new name for it, which I think is Sororella Libri, Libriel, something like that. I'm going to Google it real quick. Uh, sur- Oops. These ones are the girdle bands, right? Uh, yeah, that's the girdle band view of an amphora, and that is amphora inariensis. We're taking a picture for future reference of how it looks like. Good plan. <laughs> yes. Let's see. This one is called... Oh, okay. Yeah. Cirrella Labriel was the one that would just pass through. It's this guy. Mm-hmm. Right there. I'm going to pop that into the channel. A happy little diatom wink. <laughs> uh, uh, mean Machine Rex wants to know what would happen if I don't coat them with metal. Um, they would charge up, which you means... You couldn't see anything, right? Well, you'd still be able to see them. They would just have really bright um, boundaries or anywhere there's a, an edge. Mm-hmm. Um, they would be really bright along those boundaries because the electrons would have a hard time escaping the surface. Mm -hmm. So the metal coating is mostly so that the electrons that are um, charging on the surface basically will easily find a ground. So it will allow them to be... Somewhere to bounce, basically? They're going to roll off of the diatom and because there's metal all the way down to the uh, aluminum stub that they're on, Mm -hmm. And then the aluminum stub will, stub will basically allow the charge to go into the ground in the, um, on the machine. Mm-hmm. So rather than building up a big charge, and what would happen if you have a whole bunch of electrons in one area is that when the scan comes across that point, it will look really bright to it. And so all the edges would look really like bright mm-hmm. and probably it would cause a bunch of um, artifacts. Like we sometimes see lines that go yeah, across the screen where it's charged up um, or if a diatom is not sitting completely flat on the stage, like sometimes they're standing on their edge or like they land like a coin. Mm-hmm. If you try to take a picture of those, they'll also charge because it's hard for the electrons to basically get off of the diatom okay. quickly. So anytime there's like a spine or any Something kind of thing that's higher. really high up off of the stub, 
it will cause the electrons to charge up on that surface and it's hard for them to discharge basically. So, um, it's, uh, it's burbs is the command you're looking for, Shafar. It's the misspelled version, and that was yesterday's. I need to reset it. I didn't see any burbs today on stream. Because there was no stream? Because there wasn't a stream. <laughs> now there's zero. I got rid of it. Uh, do I use gold because it is one of the best conductors? I do. Um, that's exactly... What else could you use? Copper? If you didn't want to use gold. Uh, silver, copper. You can even use carbon. Um, uh, uh, there's any metal will work basically mm -hmm. um, we use gold because it's one of the better conductors and we don't have to put very much on it as a result and um, it allows the electrons to discharge very easily um, in, in the old days on the SEM that I learned to, to use an SEM on back in the stone ages um, the um, sputter coater that we had used gold palladium, which is actually a really common type of target that people will use to, to sputter coat um, samples, which is like a combination of gold and the, and the metals, gold mm -hmm. and palladium. Um, that's a pretty, pretty common mix that you sometimes see. Um, it, the cost for palladium is a little bit cheaper than gold, but if you get gold palladium targets, it usually is only going to save you like a hundred dollars or something. So Might as well get the gold. Just get the gold. Um, I think maybe there's a reason people use palladium for some other, some of the other, uh, you know, purposes for an SEM that you might use, like elemental analysis or something. But um, for our work, it doesn't really matter. Okay. I have a silver target. Um, we could use silver, but silver is second place and gold is first place. So <laughs> Um, we're going we're with using gold. gold. That's right. <laughs> we're going to put second place here. Uh, we don't have any burbs in the lab. Um, I'm trying to convince Mallory to let the moth, the Luna moth, uh, hatch and emerge into the lab so that we just have a pet moth in the lab and she doesn't want me to do she that. She said she's getting a cage for you to live in. Yeah, I have a cage at home. I just didn't bring it in. Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow I'll bring in a butterfly cage. But I thought we should just let it go in the lab. Uh, she didn't like that idea. I know, why not? <laughs> because it might get like in a little Sat corner on. or something. Like it so? might get into things and she said she didn't want that to. Mm. Might get sucked into the hood and then. <laughs> Maybe, that would be <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it probably would um, find a quick exodus if that were the case. Um, there are uh, birds in the hardware stores around here um, if you go to Rural King, which is the, like, it's not really a hardware store, but it's like a hardware store that's next to my house, uh, the field sparrows are inside. And if you walk around and you go into one of the corners, they'll all come flying out. Uh -huh. And they have bird food in there, so I suppose the birds eat it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know how they got in, but... Uh, they're there. <laughs> they're still there. What are you looking at? It's a nice cry to fight. Yeah. I like them so yeah. I took a picture it's a little Christmas tree ornament yes a stomaticist now that I know what they are I love them <laughs> I have a project that's just full of these things if you really want to learn them it's a challenge because naming them it was a mess no I mean I have the atlases you could put <laughs> real names on them we got an SEM uh, I mean we have all the tools you need to actually do it but I feel like you have enough projects. Yeah, I, I should stop. <laughs> if you want to stay longer, I think you need to get another degree. <laughs> and then we can have a different project for you. Yeah. Uh, why not platinum? Yeah, you can actually use platinum, uh, Bluesy. I just don't. Are you looking forward to the centipede stream? Uh, Commander Shafard, I have put my best people on finding you a centipede, and she has not uncovered it yet. Um, my daughter was like, oh, there's centipedes all over in the backyard. And I was like, yeah, I know. Go for it. <laughs> Go find me one. And then she wanted to know if she picked it up, will it bite her? And I said, yes. And then there was some hesitancy. But I will remind her of that task. On Wednesday, I have 
other people that I'm probably going to have here in the stream with me um, visiting via Zoom. Um, I think that's this Wednesday. Um, it'll, I've been planning on having Mark and Joe come a couple of times and then uh, Mark keeps having conflicts because he's extremely busy. And um, I, he said he was free on Wednesday, so I think at least we have a tentative schedule for him to be here with, uh, with Joe Mohand, who's been here a couple of times in the past. Um, you got to pick one. I am just thinking <laughs> because this you one is Stefano You can actually go to the other one later, you know. This one is Stefano Discus or Lindavia? Lindavia. And this baby one. Lindavia. They're different species. Uh huh. Yes, but um, other than the size, what am I looking for to differentiate them? Oh, um, well, you'll have to zoom in, but that's intermedia that you're looking at right there. So when you zoom in, that's the internal Oops, view of Lindavia intermedia. And you'll see a couple of things that you can use to distinguish them. One is that it has several rings of These central things. photoportula in mm -hmm. the center. It has, in this case, two, two. remoportula that are located basically halfway between so the yes, central it's area. These ones. What? These ones? Yeah, that's okay. a, that's a remoportula. Okay. And then um, the mantle photoportula are on the end of every single. This one and this yep, one. Yep, every single costi. And uh, if you were to zoom in on those um, valve face photoportula. Uh, these ones. Yeah, you'll see that they're triangular shaped. So that will get you into Lindavia. And um, so it's maybe not perfectly clear, but what's going on there is there's a, a triangle shaped sort of platform that's sticking out from the ring. So the central pore is where you have your cursor now. Yeah, I'll let you focus it because it's a little out of focus. Oops. Oh, it's so sharp. Oh my god. I think maybe it needs to have the stigmation fixed a little. <laughs> but um, so there's a central hole and then there's um, around it these little sort of curved arcs that are in triangular shapes. So these ones? Yep. And then um, covering over those is the little pointed triangle mm -hmm. pore cover right there. Yep. And there's like an edge of that that's sticking out that's covering over each one of those. And there's actually a little tiny pore underneath that cover in each case. And then the little thing that's below it is an areoli, which you should be able to, if you had your stigmation These perfect, ones, no. you should, yep. You should be able to see those have like a salt and pepper shaker sort of should head to them. Should we fix that? I mean, I think it's a good idea to try. <laughs> <laughs> Platinum's not first place. Uh, it is the best conductor, but it's a lot more expensive. Platinum? Yeah. Uh, this one, right? Stigmation, yes. And then it's the Nambis. Hmm. Try to make sure the focus is as good as you can get it first, and then... Uh, this one. Oh, my God. Yeah, somewhere in there. around there, yes. And then, then play with the stigmation knobs until it looks like the whole thing's in focus. Just do one at a time. No. Oops. It was looking good for a second there. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's pretty I good. I think around there, right? Did you do both or just one? Just one. Yeah, now I do the other one and see if you can get it to be even tighter. Worse? Better? Better there? Yeah. Now when you let go? Huh? A lot it sharper. It is better. Yeah. And you can actually start to see the little pores on that. You just need to slow the beam down. It'll show up. And maybe just a little out of focus. Yes, I think I need to. But they're there. Um, There's a conversation about whether platinum or silver is the best conductor. <laughs> oh, and we got rated by Professor EXP. Thank you, Professor. 
Um, sorry, I'm trying to work out the technical details a little bit here with Laura. Um, so she's learning to do this stuff. <laughs> and uh, I think she's done a nice job getting the stigmation on this one pretty good. And then at this point, I think maybe just zooming out and, um, you know, yeah, there. See, it looks really sharp. It's just a matter of like, you are really close in, so it's gonna be looking a little fuzzy. Yeah, now see how sharp it is? It's way better. <laughs> it is way better. Uh, diatoms are made of silica, bloody stub. Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm just slowly catching up. Um, so thank you for the raid. And uh, they said hello, fellow uh, the Knowledge Fellowshippers. The Knowledge Foundation Fellowship? I think it's Fellowship. I always forget the F. Uh, I do too respond to chat. It just takes me a while. And right now, I was just trying to help Laura get things situated. And then I'll, I'm actually moderating myself here. So, uh, fellowship, yeah. I always forget which one it is. I think foundation makes it sound like it's got money involved. Uh, but also a fellowship in, like, academic language also means you have money involved. Yes. So <laughs> I never understand. Confusing. <laughs> they look like fidget spinners, exactly. The little, the little tiny uh -huh. uh, uh, valve face photoportula look like fidget spinners. And probably when the diatoms are bored, that's what they do. Really? When they're nervous or bored, they probably spin them. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, many of them are happy little pores, yes. Uh, except for the triangle ones, which are kind of nervous. Um, Lord of the Toms. Uh, they only use silica, Bluesy. Diatoms are silica based organisms. Their cell walls are impregnated with sil silica always. Um, there are some that are very lightly silicified, but it's still silica. That's um, a requirement for a diatom, like to be classified as a diatom. So, you also see some of these little pores only have two, mm -hmm. very rarely, but usually three. Three. They usually have three little satellite pores that make triangles, and then occasionally there's like a little oddball in there like that one that only has two. Um, if we were able to look end on at these things out here, the little edges of the bottle cap, basically. They would look the same? Mm -hmm. or? They would look basically the same. They're triangle well, you shaped. Kind of yeah, you can see, see down ones. into some of them, but you can't see the bottom yeah, side. Yeah. So because the pore has a little bit of a tube that sticks out, it makes it so you can't actually see the third one, which is, I think, always present um, in Lindavi. I think they always have three um, Mantophotoportula pores around their uh, the central pore. Um, would you call them organic? Diatoms are organic. Um, their skeletons are silica, but their bodies are carbon-based. So um, just think of it like uh, like a sponge or a clam or any kind of organism um, that has a skeleton. You know, humans are mostly carbon-based, but our skeletons are calcium phosphate. So as an example, if we were just looking at the skeletons of humans, we would think, oh, you know, they're calcium phosphate, but humans are organic. Did you lose the little one? Yes. You zoomed out too far. I was looking at this one. It's to the right of where you are. There it is. Ah, this one. Yeah. So if you zoom in, we'll see the difference between Lindavia Intermedia, which is the one we were just on, and this one, which is... Oops, that's out. Wrong way. <laughs> uh, this one I think is Lindavia costii. And if we zoom in, you'll see a bunch of the differences um, that are uh, obvious if you okay, know what so you're looking for. Okay, so this one is not on every. Correct. So first of all, the mantle photoportula don't occur on every costi. Two, there's just one 
uh, Rima porcha, porchula or labiate process. Which is this one? It's littler. The diatom is littler. And if we look at the valve face, there's just one little hole. So that's the rim of portula. You see there's no ring of the mantle photoportula mm -hmm. on the, I'm mean, yeah. sorry, the valve face photoportula, but there is one uh, central photoportula. If you look, you'll see just one. Okay. It's right there, I this believe. One? I think so. There's a little bit of schmutz on it, but I think that's a central photoportula that has just two satellite pores. Yep. So like a, a, a TIE fighter in Star Wars, it just has the brackets on the two, two sides and then a hole in the center. So it doesn't have a triangle shape at all. And it's missing, well, I think it probably still has the sort of pore covers, we just can't see them because there's some clay. Oops. If you don't use silica, you can't join the diatom club. Absolutely true. Since they are silica-based versus carbon-based, do they use uh, ATCG for DNA? I think all organisms that use DNA build it out of the same material. The diatoms are carbon-based organisms. Their DNA is carbon-based, not silica-based. They just impregnate their skeleton, their cell wall, their cell wall. with silica. So, um, like I said, just think of any like a clam, you know, or... But like plants, we use cellul cellulose. These mm -hmm. ones would use silica, right? Yep. They just basically, uh, their cell walls are made out of silica or composed of... The wall is composed out of silica. So, but the inside of that material, inside the cell walls where the diatoms, if they were alive, um, that we would see would be filled with chloroplasts and cytoplasm and things that are made out of carbon. So we get rid of all that stuff because um, it blocks our field of view, for <laughs> one. We can't see what we want to look at, which is the skeletons, which is how most diatom taxonomy is based on the, um, the frustule or the valve ultrastructure and the features that are um, present therein. There are some diatoms which um, it's useful to also see the arrangement of their chloroplast, for example, but um, to get it into the genus, but um, for the most part, you don't need those things. You can just look at the structure of the skeleton to tell what you're looking at. And um, while there are some things that people have observed as crypto um, species where you can't tell them apart except for by looking at their DNA, um, or at least it'd be very difficult to tell them apart, um, uh, most of them you can at least get into the genus and usually into the species. Yeah, that's definitely it. Yeah. You didn't believe me at first? I, when I was closed up, I <laughs> it looked ugly. <laughs> it's because it's got some clay it. it looks on it. very nice. <laughs> <laughs> it just has some clay, like, right where you want to see all the features. But so this is the diatom Lindavia costii. This is, yeah, it looks like a little zero with parentheses boundaries around it. Um, so the genus that we've been looking at for these last two are Lindavia. There's a link to the Lindavia. And um, I will get you Costii and Intermedia. I believe both of, both of those are on diatoms of North America, which is where I usually grab stuff from. Uh, Actually, Costia is not on this web page, but Intermedia is. So we saw Intermedia. It's the bigger the one, one that we just looked at before this point, and that's this one. And Costia is not on here, but it's Lindavi, Lindavia, Costia. Like that? C O S T E I. Yeah, that's like just like that. And that diatom used to be called Unipunctata or Cyclopunctata sometimes. What happened? Uh, people found out it's the same as one that had precedence. So mm -hmm. in taxonomy, when you name something that somebody has already named and you didn't notice... You need to change it. You get your name taken away. Yeah. So like the diatom species that I've named, if somebody came along and said, Oh, I have that diatom, it's this name, um, and it's already been published before, 
then that, you need that's to... given precedence and your name gets erased. Yeah, yeah. So uh, somebody had identified Costii, had put a name on it, and then later on when people looked at the sample material to try to tell the difference between Unipunctata and, and, or Cyclopunctata or whatever it was in Costii, um, they determined it was the same diatom. And so subsequently they did away with the old name, the previously used name, and accepted the older one. So authority always um, goes by precedence. That way somebody can't come along and just rename things that you've named, um, you know, as a different species. We all use Botox as a prefix. I don't know what that means. I'm not a uh, DNA person. These like ones. The yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know what this one is. In cyanema. It's then. in cyanema. Right. It's making a frowny face. Or from a technical point of view, the distal end of the raphe, the far end from the middle, um, of the raphe is deflected towards the ventral or the belly side of the diatom. And so um, when it has this asymmetric shape and then the raphe does that, it's then almost always in cyanema. Yeah. Yeah, that's the deflected part right there. Hello, Patine. Give me the super meat boy. I haven't played super meat boy in so long. What is this? It's like an old video game. Uh huh. Platform, sort of like uh, Super Mario, you know? Yeah. But a lot harder. <laughs> I don't know anything about video games. You know who Super Mario was? Yeah, yeah. So. That one I know. They have Super Mario where you're from? Yeah, I just don't... I never had, like, a... Does he speak Spanish? I don't think he talks a lot. He says some phrases, though, like... At the end, when you win... Yeah, but I think it's English. It's in English? I don't know. Don't trust me, because I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> you can just tell people whatever you want, and as long as there's nobody from Colombia in the channel... They'll just trust me? Yeah. <laughs> Marco Lee. I don't know. Oh, okay. I haven't seen him say anything. Does he play video games at all? He does. So, so he, he might know. be a good, good source because I don't he know. Could, he could uh, conflict your opinion <laughs> about Super Mario. I think he... I don't know. Yeah. It might be English. I'm just trying to figure out what is it that he says. But I was just curious. I don't I actually... I think he does say, like, let's go or something. Yeah. Do most people in Colombia also speak English? Not most, but so, some. But some do? So you had to... Where did you learn English? At school. but In not college or in high school? All my school, like from pre-K to... I don't know, we have it until 11th grade. Mm -hmm. We have things in English. Mm -hmm. But not every school is like that. So it's like some specific ones. Oh, okay. Like and where you went to school, everybody does it, but not yes. every school is like that. Uh huh. And then some other schools just just have like an English class, mm -hmm. but I would take classes in English. Oops. That's all right. That's it. So that's like the difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, I took like French in high school. So I did too. That's sort of similar. But I, to I like took like French class. Yeah. I didn't take cl classes in French. Right. Right. But in English, yes, I had to take some. <laughs> mean Machine Rex says, I just found out the difference between silicon and silicone. Yeah, I think silicone, well, I don't know what the difference is. I think silicone is a gel, isn't it? I have no idea. It's like the stuff that they use for caulk caulking. Oops. You're done driving. Okay. Good to know you made it home safely. Are you putting your plankton into the cooler? 
coffee can. So if diatoms impregnate their cell walls with silica, uh, what advantage does this give them compared to similar sized organisms at their scale? I'm confused why diatoms choose to go this way versus staying with calcium. Well, diatoms didn't start off with calcium. They've always had silica cell walls. But um, one advantage is that um, silica is highly abundant in terrestrial settings, so diatoms can um, can be highly productive in places where other organisms might struggle. Um, also, it allows them to live in environments with very low pH, so that gives them a window where calcium-based organisms definitely can't live. And um, but they formed in the oceans, so if you go back to the original evolution of diatoms, um, there our assessment is that they evolved in the oceans initially. So if you go back to the, the Jurassic and, uh, and look at the sediments there, and if you happen to be lucky enough to find some diatoms in them, they have uh, silica cell walls. But they're not alone in this. There are lots of other organisms that, uh, well, maybe not lots, but several other organisms that use silica. One, um, it's, it, it may have been more plentiful in the past. Um, its potential for uh, structures tends to be, oh, it seems like it's more intricate. I don't know if that's necessarily the case because there are small intricate calcium-based organisms like nanofossils. But, um, but the, uh, the sort of approach that they have is also utilized by silica flagellates and sponges use silica, and um, there are some other algae like chrysophytes that use um, silica in their skeletons. So it's not um, completely foreign, it's just probably foreign to most people who aren't familiar with those, those organisms. Um, regularly. This one's navicula, mm -hmm. but not oblonga. Correct. Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they went their own way. Uh, I think a lot of, yeah, cacolithophores. I think a lot of um, organisms are looking for opportunity and probably their variability in sort of expressing things are about opportunities in the environment. And I think in the past, silica was a little bit more abundant in the ocean. Diatoms probably put a pretty large um, restriction on the amount of silica in the oceans. Most of the records that we have from the, the early parts of the ocean show things like sponges and radiolaria with much more silica in their skeletons, and then diatoms basically evolve. And what we see is that all of the other organisms in the ocean had to make adjustments. They started using less and less silica because diatoms basically are little pigs and they consume all the nutrients in the environment very rapidly. And, um, and so I think that, that uh, while it may have been more plentiful in the past, there are many environments that where diatoms are commonly found that have a lot of silica. So they're usually found in areas of upwelling and areas near coasts. And um, those things give them an advantage because there's a lot of other nutrients that they need that are in those locations. So there's probably not a big penalty for them um, for making their cell walls out of silica, even though it's relatively rare in the oceans today, because where they live, it's where it's also very common. Um, I mean, that's a little bit self-fulfilling, but probably, um, and it didn't inhibit them to use silica, so that, that's probably why. I don't know. I'm not sure about the, the necessarily the, the true why, but the structurally structurally speaking, um, their for their size and the lightness of the skeletons in terms of the density, they um, they're pretty strong. In fact, a lot of engineering sort of uh, analysis of the structures is done. Um, to try to see like how they they built things because um, we we sort of use biomimicry a lot in the modern world to try to 
um, use successful techniques that biology has already come up with. And I think that's part of it, is that we are looking at how they built these sort of um, structures that uh, allow the a lot of strength to the skeleton without a lot of mass. <laughs> and they ate themselves out of silica and crashed. Yeah, that happens uh, quite a bit. Um, and uh, that actually happens occasionally in freshwater settings where the nutrients, where the other nutrients they need are really high. Uh, many times they will consume the nutrients so quickly that they crash. But in the shallow areas, they still would be present because there's still a bunch of um, silica. You know what that is? Tabularia. Mm -hmm. It's tabularia. And you're looking at the septum? Yes, the mm -hmm. covered part. Mm -hmm. So this one is like the inside, right? The septum is still there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, hello, Anna. Good see, news, you're everyone. here visiting with us. You told me you wouldn't be able to see streams if I did it this time, but you're still here. Uh, hello, I think it's Regal. I'm gonna call you Regal. I know you're on Dell's stream quite a bit. Um, for 10 more minutes, you can hang out. We'll try to look at something cool in those 10 minutes. Um, my friend Anna is another diatomist. She mm -hmm. works in marine stuff, but also in freshwater. Do you know her? No, I don't know. What's her you name? shake your head. Uh, I don't know if she wants me to say her whole name. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> For later. Yeah. So if they are pigs, what do they eat and excrete? And well, so um, first off, they're autotrophic. So they like eat light. They <laughs> eat light and uh, and carbon and water, and they turn it into sugar. So carbon dioxide, water, and light are converted to sugar, like trees and grass and everything else. Um, they photosynthesize their food. They generate their own from light. And um, they don't poop because they're consuming nutrients from sun, but they they do ex excrete things from their skeleton um you know they can exchange like nutrients and and waste like products and whatever else polysaccharides some of them have a uh like a chitinous material that they can exude from their bodies um since they fuse their cell walls with silica it's it was since it was abundant does silica filter out or block uv no silica does not block uv light or radiation um, and uh, they don't need to have that happen because like most plants, um, when they're exposed to UV radiation, they take damage, but then they just repair the damage. They have a photo repair process that's actually much better at repairing damage from UV radiation than like other, many other organisms. There are some animals that are better than algae, but Algae are really good at basically just repairing damage. So during the day, they take a lot of damage from UV radiation. And at night, um, when they're respiring, when they're growing, they also repair the damage that they took during the day. And basically that keeps them able to, to be exposed to high amounts of UV radiation. Some of them are better than others. Some of the diatoms are better than others at it. <laughs> it's good to see science related content on Twitch well that's what I do uh, except for when I'm completely screwing around <laughs> which <laughs> is pretty uncommon uh, I'm, I have uh, right now I have sort of four modes of streaming um, there's the SEM streams that I do on a regular schedule good news, so everyone. Mondays and Wednesdays in the afternoons and then occasionally I will stream from my light microscope from home, um, looking at living organisms or fossil organisms that we have on prepared slides. And uh, that includes things like water bears and diatoms and rotifers and whatever else I find that might be interesting, mites, whatever. Um, that's just sort of fun time on the light microscope usually or 
Um, sometimes I'm actually taking pictures for real scientific analysis, but a lot of times it's just sort of like to relax. Um, well, that is Cyclotella ocellata, or sorry, Lindavia ocellata mm -hmm. now. Um, and you can tell because of the little depressions. Uh -huh. yeah. There's supposed to be four of them? No, or it's not required. Usually three. That one has okay. three. So this one is the third one? It's just one? covering over. It's got like a piece of junk covering over yeah, the elevation. Yeah, unfortunately. The depression. So uh, the third way that I usually stream is right now, since about like two weeks ago, I've been streaming from my camera in the morning sometimes uh, or in the afternoons. Uh, looking at birds and eventually lightning uh, thunderstorms and the moon and wow. whatever those moon pictures <laughs> wait till you see it live when I'm actually just oh focused on God. the moon um, I, I figured out basically a nice way to stream through my camera so um, I'll probably be doing some evening streams where we look at the moon and we look at lightning and uh, and other fun things that I can image like a little bit of maybe a little bit of astrophotography I also have a um, telescope which I keep threatening to stream from um, but it's cloudy most of the time in the evenings and or windy and well it's these hard. days it's been really cloudy so yeah and it's hard to do those streams um, so anyways that's sort of the third mode and then I sort of have a gaming mode that I occasionally do either with my daughter or um, as my Dr. Mo character on the weekend, sometimes um, just sort of having fun. Those are infrequent um, nowadays, but fun when I stream with my daughter. Does she have a Twitch account? Or no, no, she can't. Yours? She's too young, so she ah. just uses mine. But um, she's uh, an expert at several games. Uh, including Minecraft, and she's like a little uh, Wikipedia uh -huh. for Minecraft. You can just ask her any question. She knows the answer to everything <laughs> off the top of her head. So. My cousin also loves Minecraft. I don't know. I'm not sure what it's about. I think you build things. He's also really into that one, but... Mm -hmm. He's so older, though. Kvass Residue says so many interesting shapes of these things. Yeah, yes. that's the way diatoms are. Charismatic, interesting shapes, uh, never boring, especially not in the light, uh, light or scanning electron microscope especially. Especially this one. Yeah. You don't see all of this on the light microscope. You can see some of it. Shadows, but not like the yeah. actual structure. Uh, I should do a light microscope stream. Um, I usually do one tonight because I like to do one and then I dump all my people in to see Pacific Plankton's stream at the end of my stream. Um, but it means I have to go collect some samples, which means I have to, you know, leave the house. Do stuff. Go do stuff. <laughs> find something interesting. Um, this one's intermediate, right? In Ocelata. The Ocelata. Yeah. Uh, yeah, microscope's my way to a lot. Camera and microscope are my way to relax which is nice because that's basically my job uh, teaching on top of that, of course, but. <laughs> I got all the good stuff. It turns out we all have the moon and lightning. Um, I just am gonna image it. Uh, I have, my camera has really cool setting on it uh, called um, live composite mode. And um, like when I take a picture of fireworks, for example, um, I just open the shutter and you can watch it. You could watch the firework explode and it records the whole stream going uh -huh. up and every half a second basically it adds whatever it saw previously to the next one. Oh, so it's like the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Ah, very and then, nice. So if you look through my Instagram page, for example, at the fireworks pictures, they're spectacular because I just let it grow the whole fireworks and they look Oops. like flowers basically. Um, but it's super easy to use that in that mode and it does the same thing with lightning I can just turn it on and then I just watch and when the lightning happens I just turn it off uh -huh. and that's the picture and I can actually let several lightning uh, events accumulate happen. Mm -hmm. and it will track each one Oops. it gets a little bright after a while so I have to stop it but um, it's super easy my camera can just I can just set it to infinite distance and then click the button oh wow and then I just wait 
lightning happens and then I hit the button again. So, um, but it, I checked and the composite mode will stream. So um, you can I'm kind of that. excited about that because it means when there's lightning, basically you'll see the thing. You're just waiting for this lightning <laughs> to <know>. happen. <laughs> uh, I almost did it last night. I almost started it, but the lightning storm was mostly passed by the time I got everything going. So I just took some pictures and I haven't posted those yet because I have to do a little bit of, um, I probably have to do a little bit of light editing on them. Um, but I also just haven't even downloaded the bird po photos from yesterday mm -hmm. either. So um, I, I still have some things to do, some photography to do. So uh, what telescope do I have? Actually, I have access to uh, uh, a 14-inch and a 10-inch um, telescope through the university. I'm in charge of our department's telescopes, and I have one at home. Uh, that I took home to learn how to use and I still haven't figured out how to get the uh, I need to fix something on it and I haven't figured out how to do it yet so it's still sitting at home and um, the observatory that's here on campus hasn't been open because COVID had shut everything down so there wasn't really a pressing need to bring it back um, it's just so it's just been sitting at home um, and but I will uh, bring it back eventually and I haven't taken the 14 inch home because it's too heavy for me to pick up by myself. Uh, <laughs> I would need a, That's another, <laughs> another strong person to help me pick it up. Um, it's huge. And uh, my camera fits right into the back of it. I've got a T-mount. And so I can use the telescope as a lens. And um, when I point it at the moon, I can get about three quarters of the moon in my field of view well, and I can't back out any farther yeah, than yeah. that with the um, the camera mounted on it as a prime lens and so uh, I can get really close to the moon but I can't get far enough away to get the whole, the moon whole in, thing in my field of view um, which is cool because I could I could take two pictures that's epithemia yeah Uh, yeah, I also take pictures of snowflakes. I do a whole bunch of macro photography, and I'll probably stream some macro photography eventually. We're going to have the uh, Cicada Brood X happens here. It just they haven't started emerging yet, but I actually was planning on having a whole stream where um, where they're emerging, and I'll probably have my microscope microphone in the yard, and um, and I'll be um, imaging some of them as they crawl up the wall of my garage and emerge so you'll get some really high resolution um, macro photography shots from from me doing that which should be pretty cool um, and then I do in the winter time uh, snowflakes I do a lot of dragonfly imagery so probably there's gonna be dragonflies in my backyard I can stream some of those as well um, I'm kind of looking forward to dragonfly season every year because they're um, super fun to image and they don't run away from me. Uh, typically I can sneak up on them pretty good. So This oh. one's the Oblonga one? Yes, that's Navicula Oblonga. So which university do I work at? I work at Indiana State University. That's the lab that we're in right now where my SEM is located in my uh, most of my light microscopes are located. And Laura is my master's student, or a master's student in my lab, I should say. And um, so is Addie. Addie's in the lab right now counting. That's why she's not here visiting with us. That's a side view of a navicula. Uh, and, but she's here for the summer as well. And so we'll probably see some of Addie um, starting on Wednesday of this week, the um, student undergrad research experience starts, and that means that um, my schedule for the SEM probably will be much higher. We'll probably see a lot more SEM work, um, scanning electron microscope work on, on Twitch than my normal schedule because um, my calendar now just has me from 9 to 5 every day mm -hmm. on it. And um, and that means that any day we might be in here. Oh, it's a Simba Plura. It's the one with the cool... This one? Or yeah, this it's got one? The cool, this one. Yeah, that one. It's the one with the really cool pores. 
And this one is a Stefano Discus, not Coroscus. Yes, Coroscus? No, it's not. Oh. Right. It's hard for me to answer that question. If I say yes, it's not, or yes, it is. Do you know what the genus, the species is? Sorry, you got the genus right. I'm not sure. That's Night Gary. How? How is it Night Gary? Yes. Why? Oh. Uh, every other costi or approximately. One yes, one no? Yep. There's a spine at the end of it. And then there is a whole ring of Rumor Portula um, tubes that are in the same focal plane as the spines. Mm -hmm. And then the size. So the minimum size for those is usually like 40, 40, 35 to 40. So this is a very small, very old uh, um, Stephan discus nigeri. Yeah. <laughs> 14, 14 feet, 14 inches, not 14 feet. Hey, Astro Canuck, hello. Uh, I got a command for Astro Canuck. It's just Astro. No, sorry. Ast Astro. There you go. Look at that. Uh, welcome in. Yeah, you really stalk back through there. You can find all kinds of stuff. Uh, cool. Thanks for uh, dropping in, Regal. And you're always welcome to come hang out. Uh, Addie... Oh, you know, the lady who was working on the forums, um, Stacy, she hasn't... She hasn't been here, and I haven't really heard anything from her uh, for quite a while. She might be back. Um, Addie's looking at Clear Lake diatoms. What's the smallest thing this machine can see? Uh, well, if you mean like can resolve clearly. Um, pretty it, small. Though. Pretty small. Uh, I've been able to image stuff at 200,000 times, so real small. Um, it's, it starts to get a little bit blurry around 150,000, so the picture quality you need to really sit and spend a long time with if you want to try to get things that are that small. Um, but, you know, if something is probably 500 nanometers, we could get it, get it resolved closely enough. So that's pretty small. That's half of a micron. Um, and I think probably if it were even down to... 300 nanometers, I probably could still image it, it just would look a little blurry. Um, you wonder whether flat earthers would deny the existence of this <laughs> micro awesomeness. <laughs> uh, I don't know what they would, uh, what they would or wouldn't deny, but I feel like, um, you know, if you set out to prove that the Earth is flat, but that the rest of the planets are round, um, you're starting off with a kind of a hard premise, I think. Mm -hmm. um, how's the stream been? The stream been's pretty good. It's been pretty good. Uh, especially because Laura does all the work, <laughs> and uh, I just sit here and do Pacific Plankton's job, and then she doesn't even have to do anything, but she's here. So, um, you know, it's like a duplicate mod power and um and all i do is just glance over occasionally and blurt out some diatom facts it's working well naya g-a-r 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 a-e a-e yeah not gary oh my god i know <laughs> it's not my fault that's latin Laura asks great questions. That's what Pacific Plankton says. <laughs> she asks some really good ones when she's off the stream, too. Are they X-shaped? Oh, no, they're just little... Oh, no, they are X-shaped. They are. Oh, I love these. <laughs> we need to find one that's cleaner than this. This one's shaped like a little man. All of these, I love them. <laughs> Oops, that's not what I meant. Should still be able to focus it that closely. There you go. Very pretty. Sharp. It's looking sharp. Let's 
symbol plura? Symbol plura, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember which one. I think I looked it up for um, for the June Lake counts, but it's not common enough to really matter. It's not going to show up very much. Okay. I don't even know if it shows up in your plots. No, it doesn't. Yeah, so it's like less than one percent probably. Uh, how's the skies out there, Astro Canuck? Are you going to give us a, uh, a night sky view? They're, Where is this person? They're in London. Oh, wow. Or England. Uh, I, th I think that's London. Five more hours then. Yeah, five hours. So it's eight o'clock for them. It's starting to get dark, I'm sure. Oh, The Wednesday. day here is getting long. Yeah, it's starting to stay uh, bright Almost then, like 9.40. Mm-hmm. It will reach its maximum. June 21st. June 21st. My dad's birthday. Oh, yeah? And the summer solstice. My dad's birthday was this weekend. Oh. You can't start imaging until about 10.30? Oh, okay. Oh, is he coming back to Canada? Is he going to leave? Is he going to leave his nest in, in the UK? Is that the plan? I mean, it starts to get dark, but it has to be very dark probably for you to do most of that stuff, right? I know when I'm trying to take pictures of like Orion's belt, it can't just be kind of dark. It has to be completely dark. Um, I mean, one of the nice things for those is you, you can zoom in enough that the moon doesn't matter. Um, I do a lot of like full night sky photography and the moon's always effing everything up, so... Do you get the Milky Way here? Yeah. Somewhere, like... Yeah. <laughs> when? <laughs> Anytime? Well, you're not going to see it in uh, Terre Haute. Okay. You need to go to... When you go to June Lake... Then I can see it? Oh, for sure, you'll <gasps> see oh it. Oh, my God. You'll be out in the middle of nowhere in the darkness. You'll be in good shape. I've seen it once, but it wasn't very... Clear. If I was coming with you, I'd come back with spectacular oh. photographs. That would be all oh I did. That would be all I did while I was out there. I would be like, okay, uh, I just stayed up till 3 in the morning taking pictures of the Bye. sky. I'll see you guys <laughs> tomorrow. I hadn't realized there's a three-hour difference. Oh, yeah. I was California, very yeah. shocked. <laughs> yes. I wasn't prepared <laughs> for an hour, like, a time difference. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, well, you know, do you know we're right on the border for the... Uh, the time zone, right? Yes, because I Here. think I was looking up somewhere In and Illinois. it was very close and it, there was already a time difference and I was like, oh my god. I sometimes drive to uh, visit colleagues at, uh, at Illinois State University or at uh, University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana mm -hmm. and I always get there an hour early i'm always three-fourths of the way there and i'm like uh this isn't change. there because it's it's only like two hour drive from here and it, n it never dawns on me that i i need to go about eight miles to the west and i'm in a different time zone so um i just don't travel to illinois frequently enough <laughs> so it's so that you close that in to mind. where we are you know what i mean it's so close it's like oh yeah, I forgot. And there's a whole bunch of students who live over on that side, and they drive. That you know, must they be leave very their house, confusing. It's very confusing for them to figure out when their classes are. You know, because they everything's like in a weird. When hey, we had the juke. time change in the spring, I was very confused. Oh, when the time change happened. Yes. Yeah. And my mom was really confused. She would not. You guys don't change change time at all? No, never. Wish we were that way. The effing moon. Uh, yeah, Pinnacles is a good place. That would be great to take some night photography from. Uh, let's see. <laughs> like we, we like to wake up later in the West Coast true uh what's the purpose of the x's the x's uh on the skeleton are just pores so it's ways for them to exchange with 
uh, nutrients and waste products with the outside world. Um, it's basically communication to the outside world. So, um, in reality, there's an organic coating that's over the diatoms when they're living. And so, while the skeleton has holes or openings in it, um, it's not like organisms can just scoot through those. But they need to have some way to basically get nutrients, to add mm. nutrients to their body. So it's primarily through those little windows. And I think they excrete some waste products out them as well. So. This little part is interesting. Uh, they, they do have some sort of folder-like things uh, on Instagram, uh, Mean Machine. It's like... Um, you can save them and then you can save them into different categories. So like I saved butterflies into a category or dragonflies into a category, but I do have a lot of stuff on there. Mm -hmm. I have like 3000 photos on my Instagram page or maybe more. Um, and it's easy for me to accumulate 3000 photos because I usually dump like 10 at a time when I put them on um, or more sometimes. Uh, Body portals, yeah. Or portholes. Highlights. It would be nice if you if you could... Um, I mean, that's what tags are meant to do, but that's not really how tags work on Instagram. So, I mean, more, more or less the tags, are, if you click, it's going to show you everybody's... Yeah. You know, whatever it is you clicked on. Instead of just showing you, like, this person's... Also, I get sort of lazy when I'm posting like 15 photos of birds. I don't want to go through each one and put like backyard birds or whatever the hashtag I use on them is. Um, I mean, I don't have many followers, so I feel like it's not a big deal. And um, I just get bored with it trying to put a tag, put the same tag on like, you know, 10 or 15 photos at a time. So. Hey, you found my little orange uh, Astrophilus hiding in the uh, BTTV emotes. How you doing, little chook? Are you getting ready to stream or are you going to draw something for us? I think it's Fragilaria. I was thinking, but it's not Cretonensis. No. No. The other one's bigger, bigger, bigger. Yeah. And skinny. This is like... Uh, Familica or... I don't know. It's a pretty uncommon in these samples, so it's probably... Cappuccina or Familica, mm -hmm. one of those two. Something in that range. Oh, you don't think you did that great on your interview? No. That's too bad. I had a friend who told me that um, they did an interview for a position. They, they were trying to get a job as a professor, and they had done a whole bunch of interviews. And um, they finally had one where they got to go to the site, and they gave their talk, but they threw up. They were like sick <gasps> oh and they were God. miserable the whole time and they were like um, like they gave their talk just like feeling totally gross and they were like oh that one didn't work out you know and then they got that job so uh, well I mean sometimes when people see you and you're not at your best uh, then they think oh if this is what they're like when they're not doing well then it must be pretty good when they're well yeah must be pretty good not the best way to prove how good you are but <laughs> I don't know. So as long as you didn't throw up, I suppose it's probably a pretty good interview. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> was it was it a virtual interview, right? Through Zoom? So like everything's always Everything's awkward. on Zoom now. Yeah. Uh 
I'm sure they're impressed. Also, I think you said it was like your third interview with them, so I feel like they saw two, two other interviews with you. They probably know what they're getting. You see it has a girdle band laying in the vowel mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. Not ideal, but... It's its own girdle band, or it's someone else's? I don't know. Yeah, hard for me to tell. I mean, it probably is its own, but it could be anything. You got super intimidated that you were meeting the CEO and the VP of communications. Well, they're just people. They put on their pants the same way you do, probably. <laughs> so. I, I guess I... I gave up being intimidated by people a long time ago. Uh, I used to work at the United States Geological Survey in, in Reston as a... Like Dan? Uh, or CH? Cappuccino. No, no C. No H, I mean. C-I-N-A, yeah. Um, and there were Oops. all these super famous scientists there. And uh, and then just sort of disabused me of the notion that there's anything special about them. They're just people. I mean, you just get used to seeing them and eating lunch with them and whatever else. I mean, so... I think they're only intimidating in that they, they hold the potential to give you a job or not, I suppose. Oh, they might not wear pants, it's true. And you might not have been wearing pants. It's Zoom. <laughs> pants are optional. Are they, though? I mean... No one can tell right now whether you have pants on. Me, they can see a little bit of my pants, but... Uh, you got the desk covering it up, so... <laughs> you gave them a scrambling, nervous version of Juke. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that one. I'm not sure which one this is. Uh, because at first I thought it was the same one, but then I thought I saw the Rafi, so it's not. Mm, I'm not sure what that is. I think Anna already left. We could ask her. She's not going to like it, because if I say it's Salafra, she's like, you always say everything is Salafra. So, what we have to go on, the areoli are round, simple. And very apart from each other. And widely spaced, so probably not Salafra. And let's see, the rafi is hooked. Maybe Plaquenese? It's kind of skinny for Plaquenese. It's drawing very slowly. Um, also, it looks like it's slightly asymmetric. I'm going to go with Simbaplura. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a Simbaplura. Because of the asymmetric part of it? Yes. So the top and the bottom of the valve look totally different. Yeah, this one's like bigger, Rounded. right? Yep. That's the dorsal side. That's the ventral side. And it's flattened. So like the top one is rounded, the bottom one is flattened. Mm -hmm. And it's just subtle, but it's there. And... I would guess Simbaplura as a result. This one was a tricky one. I just, I didn't, once I saw the raffia, I was like, oh my God, I don't know what this is. I'm with you. I don't know what it is, but 
I'm going to guess simple plural. Or in synopsis. Yeah. Let's see the simple plural in synopsis, I think. I don't think it's new. Uh, yeah, just don't stand up and you're fine. I don't think it's a gumphonema. Um, it's not asymmetric no. in that direction. It's asymmetric the other way. <laughs> I don't think it's a new discovery. I think it's more like, uh, yeah, there is one. Uh, let's see. It will be uh, in synopsis. In synopsis. Um, it's yeah I think it's in synopsis because the valve ends are curling yes. towards the ventral side yeah distal raphes deflected ventrally okay this one's new to me spelling is your nemesis uh, only if Nemesis wasn't so hard to spell. It's spelled just like it sounds. Look at those cool spines on the end of that thing. This one... I meant the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Area. But this one is... Girdle view of a navicula. Okay. See how you can see the lineolate stri? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the girdle band. This and one. then the lineolate stri on the other vowel. Mm -hmm. I would guess it's probably cymbella, or not cymbella, navicula. This one... Uh, it's another tabularia, or it's the same? Oh, that could be fragilaria, fragilaria crotonensis. I don't know, it's broken? Yes. So, who knows what could have happened on the other side of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the vacuum pump. Uh, hang on. Uh, can you open up? Um, under the start menu. Here, let me do it, I guess. Yes. All I want is the droid cam. I want the droid cam client. So you make your phone a, cam a camera? Yep. Oh, there you go. Now they're going to be able to tell if you have pants on. <laughs> we do, so that's <laughs> Uh, and then I can click this and it's, they can see what we're seeing. See? There's Laura. The, uh, the buzzing noise is coming from this thing right here, which is the pump. It pumps the air out of the chamber. So it's always running while the machine is running. And, uh, and then when it's off, we can't see. And then that's the computer that's running the, uh, scanning electron microscope right there. That one over there runs the EDAX. That's why it says EDAX, which is the elemental analyzer. And you can see Laura's shoes. Very clean. They're kind of <laughs> dirty. <laughs> and then um, this is the actual, yeah, you'll give them some scale. This is the scanning electron microscope itself. <laughs> and so what we're using, I sort of stand back see for more of her scale. <laughs> There's a desk that's kind of built into it. And then this is the elemental analyzer. This is the secondary detector, which is the thing that's drawing the picture for us. And then this one is the camera that looks into the inside chamber, which I think we have off today. And then this is like a drawer that opens up. And sometimes when we're taking samples in and out, um, I'll do this so you can kind of see the whole process of us opening and closing it. And then you can see over here is where we sort of prepare all the stubs and store them. There's a gazillion of them laying out because I still haven't had time to clean everything up. 
can make more. There's the calendar up there. Here's the samples that we're looking at. We're looking at sample F023, which is number one. Mm -hmm. And then there's a cool poster I made of diatoms. Um, over here is the sputter coder, which is where the gold plating happens. So now you have a good idea of the whole lab. It's a really big room. whole SEM lab and over here I have a uh, um, a little stereo microscope that we use to prep samples sometimes and um, also when I change the filament I have to be able to center it so I use that to center it and then uh, around the corner is a nitrogen tank that we use to um, pump air into the chamber. So Laura's just decided she's had it with my tour <laughs> and has gone on to continue to take pictures. <gasps> and we can switch it back. So uh, you need to click on the little OBS thing for me really quickly. Uh, this one? No. Well, you can close that, but first do the other one. This one? Yeah, and click on SEM main. There we go. There. And then you can just minimize that. Yeah. There you go. You got the whole tour. <laughs> Where are the electrons stored? Uh, they're stored up at the top. And hello, open set, you goofball. Um, orange lids? I don't know if they mean this one. Uh, I don't know. That's, uh, I think that's Laura's uh, water one? bottle. It's got a cat on it or something? Is yes. that the one you're talking about? I don't know. What kind of books are stored on the shelf back there? Those are National Geographics from like uh, 30 years ago. <laughs> um, oh yeah, uh, the caboodle is actually uh, my wife's. So I can bring the caboodle over. Um, this is where I store all of the supplies that we use in a uh, caboodle from uh, my wife's childhood, which she still had. And um, I find it hilarious to walk around with all of my science gear is basically in a caboodle. <laughs> um, and then when I tell people, bring me the caboodle, they know what I'm talking about. pretty funny. Uh, it's essential, yeah. <laughs> uh, why nitrogen? Um, so mean machine nitrogen is what makes up most of our atmosphere today. 80% uh, of it is nitrogen, which is inert. And um, when we go to open the chamber, because it's currently in a vacuum, we need to get air into the chamber to equalize the pressure. And um, if we just let air from the room in, what would happen is all of the dust and, uh, and hair and pollen and whatever else that's in the room would then get sucked into the chamber. And because what we're looking at is mostly dust-sized particles, that's usually bad. So in order to avoid that, what we use is nitrogen gas, which is basically just inert gas, but it's effectively air. It's like an air tank. Um, and we use nitrogen because it's what's most of the composition of our atmosphere anyways and quickly dissipates when I pump it into the chamber and then open the chamber um, so it's not a big deal uh, it's basically a way for us to have pure air uh, pumped into the chamber in a relatively cheap way so we don't need the oxygen um, we have oxygen in our room uh, you know normally and so they just use nitrogen to keep the um, the chamber clean <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, the electrons are stored in a metal container labeled metal. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in the tungsten filament at the top of the SEM, there's an electron gun, and the electrons all come from the tungsten filament. It's just like an actual light bulb in your house, which has also got a tungsten filament. Um, but our light bulb doesn't use regular light. It uses electrons. So, uh, Rod says your bottle is weird. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, a cat? Yes. Does it have a cat face on one side no, or is it just the ears? it's just the ears. Oh, okay. Uh, do you often have chair races? No, but when I need to find something that's on the table behind me, I do this. And then I very quickly like snap to the back of the room and back to this side. So um, I don't know if anybody really wants to get in a chair race with me. Uh, no more this is <laughs> like we can go to the hallway <laughs> right if we take it to the hallway then uh, they maybe. probably still don't want to get into a chair race with me because I throw elbows you know oh I watch hockey <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw elbows if anybody gets close <laughs> so uh, I don't I don't care there's no referee so I'll cheat uh, little Chuk says their caboodle is littered littered with Lisa Frank stickers. Oh, cool. Uh, and Pac says she must have been young before the caboodle. Yeah, I didn't have one when I was a kid either, but my wife did, so. Uh, and she's younger than me. What did they use it for? I think makeup. Uh huh. I don't know. It's just like a box that people put stuff that in. That have like little compartments. Yeah. I mean, if it was a dude, it would be like a tackle box, uh -huh. right? Uh, I mean, it not just that has women a different be. name because it's a girl's It's a, a one? girl's tackle box, uh -huh. basically. I don't think you put fishing lures in it, but... You could. Little Chuk would probably know, or my wife would know. All I know is, she's like, oh, you should just use this caboodle box, and she thought it was funny, and I was like, I'll take it, I don't care. <laughs> well, caboodle for science. What a great name. Caboodle. Uh, Rod says they had three of those containers, and they used them to store their Hot Wheels cars, and they were born in 1995. I always wanted the Hot Wheels car wash, but no one would get it for me because it was not for girls. And I really wanted it. What kind of Hot Wheels car would you like? No, I'll it was a car one. wash. Oh, a car like, wash. It would have soap and everything. Do they still not, they don't have it anymore? I don't know. I didn't even have the cars. I wanted the car wash. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted the, the car wash. Well, I figured it might come with one or two cars. I don't know. Well, you could always borrow some cars. Yeah, Dirty yeah. cars are easy to come by. Well, Hot Wheels ones? cars? Yeah. <laughs> Sylvia probably has a dozen of them just laying around somewhere. Uh, Pragmatic Entropy said, I'm so old I had to look up caboodles. I didn't know what they were either. Um, you know, when I was, when I was young, I don't when know. When you were young. <laughs> put stuff in a shoebox or something, I guess. That sounds really dramatic. Yeah, when I was a kid, we I had, had a bucket. shoebox, and we liked it. I had a bucket and... A bucket. <laughs> I put in there all my farm animals and dinosaurs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't need partition containers. <laughs> we had buckets. I had a bucket. <laughs> uh... Open set says, I just carry around my electrons mostly in your cells. Maybe she ate one of those tungsten filaments. Definitely. Wrap it around yourself. Um, I bet they make a really great tungsten filament hat. Uh, if you just coil it here, and probably it would also keep the government from being able to read your mind. This one is the intermediate one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, you like my slick chair moves. Uh, that's what years of practice looks like. I just flip over there and back every time, right to my samples. If only I knew where my samples, which one of my samples was which, because they're all labeled on the bottom of them and they're very small labels. Uh, does the tungsten gun use quantum tunneling to release electrons? Um, I don't 
know what that is. Um, I think what it does is it basically puts a charge through the tungsten and then it heats it up. And then what happens is um, all of that is contained in the top part called a Weinheld cap. And the electrons form a cloud around the tungsten up there. And then um, in the chamber itself, there's an, uh, an anode that has a positive charge that pulls the electrons out. And then there's a series of magnets that are used in the column that force the electrons down through the column to be organized into a tight beam. So in the same way that a lens would focus a light, the electrons are focused by the magnets and um, that allows us to Oops. control where they hit on the samples. Um, I don't, outside of that, I'm not an engineer and I can't answer questions about how it works. Um, I just know the, the basic like fundamentals of what it's doing. Um, you know, I study diatoms, not scanning electron microscopes, mm -hmm. but um, I know enough to know how it works and that's basically my limit, so. Pacific Plankton said they had a tackle box and a toolbox. I mean, I have toolboxes now. And she says she's not a dude. And mm -hmm. she says she used a bucket. <laughs> and Rod said Laura is getting Hot Wheels car wash for her birthday. <laughs> When's your birthday? June 23rd. Oh, right after your dad's. Yeah. Almost. Well, we almost share a birthday. That must be exciting. At your house, there's a bunch of cake all in one week. Yes. Somebody gave you last time six dollars and ninety cents <laughs> a tip and there's seven dollars on camera so <laughs> we know that i actually paid the money that came in thank you actually overpaid the money because i had to you know cover the 40 why did they give you six dollars and 90 i don't know those 90 cents <laughs> uh, must have been all they could afford um and they requested that you start your own streaming. Pseudos? Okay. Okay. So, just so we're clear, there's your money. <laughs> Thank you. You can buy whatever you like with it now. I think they wanted you to start streaming with it. I don't know how $7 is going to help. I did get an account. Oh, you do? Yes. I followed you on it. You're following me now, huh? Okay. I'm Plankton Adventures. Plankton Adventures? Yes. What about the Benthic? I figured I planned on maybe phytoplankton adventures but I figured plankton adventures would be just as good <laughs> it's a good name I had a cigar box that I kept my Legos in when I was uh -huh. a kid <laughs> car wash is very entrepreneurial <laughs> <laughs> um, Petine my cat's not here um, I can't put Wednesday on the SEM oh, baby. but uh, if I stream tonight, I will put Wednesday on the microscope for you. Uh, it's just that it will be, you know, four hours or five hours from now, probably, or maybe a little bit later. Who named her? The, um, the shelter. Oh. We got ours from the Terre Haute Humane Society shelter. Mm -hmm. and, she uh, came with the name? There was, like, uh, the Adams Family mm -hmm. combination. Yeah, yeah. And um, we, we had some plan going in to provide a name for her because we knew what she looked like from the website. And uh, I think she was supposed to be called Evie after the uh, Pokemon character and uh, the Fox Pokemon character. And uh, when we found that her name was Wednesday, Sylvia decided she liked Wednesday better. So uh, since we let Sylvia name the cat, and she said Wednesday was what she wanted to go with, so we just went with it. Okay. So, it's I mean, nice it doesn't name. matter because cats don't listen to you when you tell them come here or call them by their name anyway. If but you I, want to I, get my cat's attention, you <laughs> shake, the, shake the treat jar, and then she's like, oh, okay. You want I me saw to a study here? where they showed they do know their names and everything. They just <laughs> choose not to. They just don't care? Yeah. That makes it worse. Corescas, no. Yes. Yes? Probably. Or Minutulus. I guess it's probably Coruscus. Yeah, so guard boxes are pretty good until, like, the paper hinge starts to wear down over time. Uh, what about printing QR codes and pasting them on top of samples for easy reading? <laughs> well, if I put a QR code on there, I won't be able to read it with my phone. They're too small. 
Uh, by the way, I'm a guy, so you can use he, him, bruh pronouns. Bro? <laughs> bruh. Okay, bruh. <laughs> uh, Laura's stream would be great. They're looking forward to it. They're more excited <laughs> about your stream than mine. I think that's what I'm getting from this. I'll think of something nice to stream. I feel we like had agreed on the onion rings, but I'm not sure that would yeah. have a lot of public. <laughs> Watching somebody eat, pu eat onion rings is actually just a whole category in Twitch. Oh, okay. So maybe I can I get a couple probably, of fans. You can probably get a bunch <laughs> of fans to come watch you eat onion rings. Um, you know, as long as you noisily eat them. Oh my God, no. Near the microphone. No, no. No? I, I don't like eating noisily. But you don't have to hear it. They do. Who would want to hear that? I mean, I'm just going to tell you. There's a whole ASMR channels where all people do is it's, eat crunchy it's food. It's very disturbing. I'm the same way. I don't <laughs> like noises when people eat. I have the same misophonia that you do. Like, that makes me angry to hear people eat. It's, mm -mm, no. Yeah. I'm always just like, okay. I, I would just be else. happy to give them my opinion. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to eat it over here and then be like, you didn't hear that, right? I would I be like, about. look at it, it's very nice. Oh, we're you're going to see how crunchy it is. You're not going to hear it. Do though. you need me to bring my camera? We can do a little photo shoot for yeah. each onion ring. I can be a guest it's on the your... burger and everything. I will be a guest on your night. stream. Okay. That would be great. I'll invite myself. <laughs> I tried the ones for, from Mr. Muggers and they were good. Oh, you went to Muggers? Yes. You liked it? Yes. Yeah, I think they probably have one I of the better... I had a veggie burger with the onion. Not onion rings, onion sticks. Onion sticks? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, she came in on with... Yeah, she comes in at, in the evening streams whenever I do them. She's nosy. That's my cat. Evie is kind of hard to pronounce repeatedly when calling for them. That's true. Uh, Open set says maybe you should have named your cat Treat Jar, ah. or just the Treat Jar shake sound, I guess, and then it would know its name. That's exactly <laughs> a great idea. We can use Pacific Plankton says we can use Bruh for her as well. <laughs> bruh. How old is she? Pacific? No, <laughs> the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I don't talk about a lady's age. <laughs> the cat. Uh, let's see. We got her a year ago, and she was a few months old. Oh, so, so she's like... A year and a half. Oh, baby. Uh, you witnessed Daisy eat a lobster on stream. I saw that stream too, little chook. Um, I don't know if I said anything while it was going on. So I was like, why is she eating a lobster? Um, but it is a category called mukbang that people do. I'm not joking. <laughs> I wasn't joking about the eating it. Uh, they just they eat food on stream. Very interesting. <laughs> I mean, people like things, I guess. And if there's streams. people willing to stream it, then I guess. Yeah. Uh, Patine says, uh, if they were going to get adopt a cat, they would get a black one because nobody wants the black cats. And then they made a crying face. Yes. Uh... And then Rod said, food ASMR is a thing. Yes. Uh, I always use bra, so it's male and feminist too. <laughs> okay. Good idea, Rex. Uh, there are many Japanese and Chinese streamers doing that on other platforms. Yes. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't compete with them. They don't have Laura, so... <laughs> And uh, she knows onion rings super well, so I don't know how good they are at <laughs> onion ring, but she's going to be just zoomed in on onion rings in particular. And I don't know that there's a whole lot of them that just are mukbanging the onion rings. So, uh, Pragmatic Entropy said, microscope and onion ring as it decomposes. I don't want to just leave something sit on the microscope that long. I got things to do with my microscopes. Um... Whenever the doctor appears on your stream, Laura, you can use a sitcom applause effect sound. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> I could be, I'll be there for comedic purposes. And then I can just be a smartass the whole time. Looks like we have a deal. I'm fine with it. I mean, it's your stream. You just let me know what you want me to do. 
I'm, I'm always in support of my students, whatever they want to do. If you want to, you know, eat onion rings in front of strangers <laughs> loudly and then give them your opinion on it, I think it's great. <laughs> I support that. That's the kind of advisor I am. <laughs> I stand behind my students and their... Weird decisions. Their decisions. Whether they're <laughs> weird or not, it's not for me to judge. Uh... <laughs> Hope and Set gave you a shout out for people to follow you. <laughs> so you're going to have followers now. There you go. Yeah, I think Plankton Adventures, that's what you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Oops, I need to click on. this you? I'm not sure, I guess. Three Should followers be. now. Oh, I have three followers. Well, yeah. I'm ready to be internet famous. Yeah, you're there. <laughs> That's how I started with just three followers. And look at me. I've got like 1800 now. That's a lot though. I mean, it's okay. That's, a, that's more than 800. No, 1800. Oh, yeah. It's pretty good for a year, yes. less than a year. And maybe I reached the saturation limit for people who want to watch diet. Diet yeah. yeah. You never know. It's a pretty good number for diet some streaming. <laughs> Clergana, hello. <laughs> Wait, I need to type. Glorg. Um, uh, you were followed by Glorgana, so. <laughs> Gorgana streams uh, taxidermy, oh, wow. among other things. So she streams like, um, sometimes she's just like putting together a possum skeleton, like piece oh by piece. Oh my god, poor baby. Yeah, I think it got killed. I, I think it was, it's dead and she's like boiled the, uh, you know, uh -huh. organic parts off and then it's just like a bone puzzle piece she's doing. And sometimes she puts birds back together, like taxidermy birds. I don't think I could do that. Well, I have it on good authority that they're just little gears on the inside and they wind up. No. So it would be like poor baby. <laughs> it died. They're just robots. They're like little robots with gears on the inside. You can ask Lorgana, she'll probably tell you. They're just they're just tiny robots. They got cameras for eyes and they're spying on us at all times. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, can this SEM do x-ray spectrums to determine chemical analysis? It does, uh, Patin. It's the x-ray um, EDAX elemental analyzer that I showed earlier, if you were here when I was doing a little tour. This um, one's an amphora? Or what is this Yes, one? amphora in Ariensis. Now there's five followers. You are going to be famous. <laughs> there you go. Now I have to start streaming because... Yeah, you're going to have to. There's pressure <laughs> building. Yes. You can start looking for mansions on Zillow. It's <laughs> a good idea. If you get rich, you just have to remember your poor old advisor <laughs> and throw a little bit of money my way. You know, enough we could get a new SEM. Uh... <laughs> That's amazing, open set. Glorkana says she's a variety streamer plus dead stuff. That's a good way to look at it. The opossum was hit by a car. Um, birds aren't real. See? Glorkana <laughs> just said so. And she looks at their insides, so... Oh, Dissolution says they feed the birds bread, and then that deletes their recordings. And that's a great plan. Uh, let's see. This one's a Ropalodia? I have a bird. Yes, that's Ropalodia gibba. But they're now Epithemia. Oh. Uh, I have a chicken, don't I? I feel like I should have a chicken. Oh, maybe my, um, maybe my subscription to the peach ops has ended. I'll have to fix that somehow here. 
Um, Rod says they finally finished up setting up their laptop for streaming. They're going to do programming, systems, engineering, studying. And they have so many exams right now, they're going to have to wait for a bit. Well, I feel like if you're going to show us showcase studying, Rod, um, now's the time to do it. <laughs> you got all this studying to do. Um, we can watch your hair fall out live on stream, <laughs> or you can be ripping it out as you're studying. And I think that would be great drama for everybody. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of birds. Birds. Oh, I see. OpenSec gave us a birds uh, math symbol. Real, not real. Watch me stress out with a uni stream. That's perfect. I think that's a great idea, Rod. Um, you could do the same with my R issues <laughs> yeah yeah you could stream yourself Why trying to trying to make working? our work or uh or, or GIS. qgis um i don't have a whole lot of stressful things to stream so what happens is um you can bring your people you can raid my channel when you're done being famous with them <laughs> and then they'll be stressed out with you and they'll come just relax with mine. the birds it'll and be diatoms. like birds and diatoms and whatever we have on the microscope and i'll give them my bob ross impression you know <laughs> it'll be very soothing and balance then, and then i'll hand them over to pacific plankton when i'm done with them we'll just have a, a continuous all-day stream where it's stressful in the morning and then it just gets nicer as it goes <laughs> That's a very accurate representation of real life, though. So. <laughs> my day's stress-free all the time right now, because uh, it's like my normal life. But five of my classes have been removed from my schedule. <laughs> so. But now you're going to have a bunch of students to take care of during the summer. That's true, but they're the same students I take care of on top of all of the things I uh -huh. normally do. That's true. So, and they already mostly know what they're doing. So, I think it'll still just be fun time. That's the way I look at it anyway. They might not find it fun. Uh, you got brain wiped for lunch? Um, I mean, if, if P-Chops was here, he'd probably give us a little brain wipe. Get a little bit of the brain on the sides of your mouth and then you need to wipe it off. One B or two Bs? G I B B A. Jibba. Um, I keep trying to talk everybody into doing like an all day long microscope stream, but the problem is like we never know when OpenSet's actually going to stream. It's just a total mystery. Just, you know, wild OpenSet appears and then. Um, you know, it would be like, I could do bird stream in the morning, hand it off to Jolkson, and then I could come back at like nine o'clock at night and Jolkson will still be streaming. So he'll take care of like solid eight hours in the middle of the day, which would be great. Oh. Yeah, and, and open set usually starts at midnight, and then he streams until like 5 in the morning, so he could help us get around the other side. <laughs> For 24 hours of It would be best if, it was, if it was after Pacific Plankton, so, so he could be from 2 in the morning until like 2 the ac next afternoon. Do one of his 12-hour marathon streams. There, that's better. Mine are always like 2, this one's epithemia two to 4 well. hours at most. That's epithemia, yeah. Uh, I think it's Adnata. Three a.m. to nine a.m. That's a crazy time slot. You're like open sets like the college DJ DJ time slot. You know, mm -hmm. like he gets to play whatever he wants in that time slot because the the radio station's not paying attention.
Is this the epithemia? Yes. Okay. It's just somewhere here. <laughs> It'll show up eventually. <laughs> yes. It's because you didn't turn it to be perfectly cornered. Corner. No, I didn't. You haven't been rotating the stage at all. No. <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Your favorite creative hours are 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. So you can either stay up late for it or wake up early for it. I could stay up from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., but I can't get up at 3 a.m. That's crazy. Unless I'm going to the airport. Yes, otherwise it's middle of the night. I'll be up at 3 a.m. I'll be going to bed then. But getting up at 3 a.m.? Mm -mm. Not unless I'm going to the airport. And I have to. Yeah, now it's very useful to have microscope streamers on different time zones because we could hand it off to um, Spider ID, who's in S Sweden, right? And um, for him, it will just be normal hours in the morning, right? And then he usually streams until about one or two, and then I can do a little afternoon stream, and I could hand it off to Jolkson, and I could pick up an evening stream on the other side of it from the light microscope straight to Pacific Plankton. We could cover that whole window. We could have a, a science streaming marathon day. No problem. Just like a normal Wednesday or, or Monday. Monday. Either one of those days would work. And we could stick Dell in there as well. We could easily cover that time. We just need to make it happen. <laughs> And we could probably stick in Laura sometime in the middle of the afternoon getting onion rings. <laughs> At lunchtime. Lunchtime or dinner? Yeah. Mm, dinner. <laughs> Why not? Well, I mean, it's your stream. You got to make some decision about when you want to. I eat think I would rings. run out of places where they sell onion rings pretty quickly. Um, I don't know about that. No. It's Indiana. They like fried food here. Yeah, that's true. A crucified and everything. This one's epithemia. Ad nada. Ad nada. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I wasn't joking. I think we could do a. Um, we could follow the little Chooks example and organize regular uh, raid train for science. And um, and then we just have everybody scheduled so that you you know start a little bit before the next one, and then uh, we just took them up. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, <laughs> carry the giant raid train from the synth festival directly in. Uh, I don't know how happy they'll be when they get there. But you could. It's uh, Epithemia Gibba again. Mm hmm It's just this one is uh, all alone. Yeah, it's nice. It's not so... It's not at a weird angle either. Most of, I'm most rotating of the synth this one. nerds love science anyway. Oh, Rod wants to make a uh, automatic turn scheduler. That's a good idea. Did you turn it? Yes. Oh my goodness! It's like I, it's like you took my criticism as a criticism. Because like, this now one, I'm gonna start turning them. Because this one is really <laughs> nice, and I wanted it to be like. <laughs> <laughs> this one deserves the turning. Oh, okay. Those <laughs> other ones, trash. <laughs> or they're round, and we don't need to turn the round yes. ones. Yes. Hey, Tropical Geek, how are you doing? Uh, you got a lot of cool emotes there. We don't need to wear masks anymore because both Laura and I are vaccinated and according to the CDC, which our university is now following, two people who are vaccinated in the same space do not need to wear masks. 
Yay. So just imagine I have a hair mask in the shape of a beard. <laughs> this is Laura. Hello. The camera's <laughs> over there. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone is there and the camera is there. I don't know. Who is Laura? Laura is a master's student who works in my lab now. She's from Colombia, and she started in January, January with me. And she's working on a project in California with Dr. Mike McGlue, who's also been on my show before as a guest interviewee um, when we were looking at Lake Tanganyika uh, papers. And Mike and I also work in the Sierras on projects together. And we've also worked in the Pantanal together on projects. and. I'm sure we must have something else that we've worked on together, but um, we're like science buddies. And um, his students often end up working on my projects and my students often end up working on his projects. Um, so uh, we do nice collaboration. I think it works out well for the students. So Laura's gonna go to the field in two weeks, two and a half uh, weeks. Yeah. She's going to go out to do some field work with Mike and his grad students at uh, Gull Lake, which is adjoining to June Lake. June Lake. And she'll be looking at the diatom record and also some modern diatom samples from Gull Lake. And I'm letting her organize her sampling strategy and core collection and everything else. Uh, and then she's going to come back magically <laughs> with materials. Laura was also very recently awarded a grant to go to the La Corps facility at the University of Minnesota. And so when she gets back from the field, she's going to then go back out again, back out <laughs> to hopefully to Minnesota um, to sample the core and to prepare and process materials from the field work. So not that I don't want her around, but <laughs> um, she'll be out in the field for two weeks and then she might be back for a couple of weeks before she heads to Minnesota for a few weeks or for a week. And then uh, they'll sample all the materials that they collected and image the cores and run them through all kinds of uh, um, uh, run them all through sort of some sort of sensors and then um, she'll come back. She'll have samples to start to analyze and then that'll be her master's project to analyze the surface samples and the sediment samples from Gull Lake. And she's also working with me on um, some GIS and R statistical analyses of some uh, samples, these samples actually. So in addition to working on Gull Lake, she's also working on some stuff from June Lake with me. And a little bit of everything. Yeah, <laughs> it's good for her. Uh, it'll give her a little bit of quality experience. And so that will probably be one paper. We have another paper that she's probably going to work on before she ever even gets to looking at any of her own samples. <laughs> and then um, she'll have papers coming out from her own research. And likely by the fall, I'll have another paper that I'm working on that she'll probably be a co-author on. Um, where we look at the June Gull Lake connection and the evolution of the diatom that I named from this lake system, Stephanodiscus coruscus. Where are the girls you know? Um, there are two days from being in the lab basically 24 seven. Um, so Mallory is currently in the lab, um, Addie is in the lab and on Wednesday, Rihanna and Eleanor will be back from um, from wherever it is they go when they're not here having classes. I think Rihanna's already back. Uh, Rihanna's been working. She works also at the uh, the rec center, doing. Uh, she's a, a lifeguard and she trains people on how to swim and stuff. So um, she's around. She just hasn't been anywhere near our lab for like mm. three months now. So I don't know that Laura even knows Rihanna. No, I don't. Um, and uh, Eleanor's around all the time, of course, and so is Mallory, but they, uh, last time Mallory was on the stream was last no. Monday, I think, um, or last Wednesday. So I told her she could come hang out with us, but she'd rather work. 
or do things or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing actually. I think she's making slides for me. So, and Addie's counting slides, which is what she should be doing. So, we're just training Laura on how to use the SEM, and also I'm helping her learn to identify diatoms that she's likely to come across <sighs> when she analyzes the gull lake samples because the two lakes are right next to each other. So, our assumption is that they probably have similar flora between them, but there's no guarantee that that's always going to be the case. Let's see. Is this a Starosira? Which is this one? Uh, I believe that is a monorephid diatom. I believe it's Cacanese neodemuda. <gasps> it's so small. Yeah. Demuda means small. Ah. De there you diminuta, go. sorry. Means little. Uh let's see. A Twitch bot app that for questions so that you can filter the chat with commands and give rewards for interesting questions. Oh, that sounds like a cool idea. I don't know what kind of rewards I would give somebody. Um ones that don't cost money or whatever. Why does the background look different? It's because I'm using a different camera today. Um, I got one of the conference cameras from our uh, from our teaching facilities because nobody's teaching right now. And these are what we usually use for classroom cameras. And it's a nicer camera. It's got cleaner it's image wider. and it got a wide screen. So, um, so we can both be in the field of view Somebody's come in, yes, but I can't see uh, you. Mallory. Oh, it's Mallory. Cool. Tropical Geek was just asking about you. Really? I thought Tropical Geek never came in anymore. They don't, but probably because you're never here, and they mostly came to see you. That's right. What's the, uh, what's the two, what, why is there two cameras? Uh, that one's not doing anything, and that one's showing, it's the wide camera, so they can see you currently. Now they can see all of us. Whoa. What are you going to do so. when everyone's in the lab? Are we going to, like... The camera will work. We could all like be on that camera. Look at it. Look at this, y'all, like, the misbehavior in the background that they missed on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the bread you were talking about? Yeah. May I try a little piece yeah. of it? Laura made chocolate uh, zucchini bread. So. At the time, I just ate it. And then it. brought it in. I was like, I was like, that's why I was like... Yeah, yeah, you can have Rod some. Rod says Laura is pre-famous stage right now. <laughs> Follow her Twitch channel. Laura's literally already uh, You don't want the whole thing? The can diatom looks thing? like a yeah. boat. Oh, shoot. I thought, I, I thought. All right, we'll see you later, Rod. Thank you for hanging yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I took a lot of pics from the University of Minnesota the other day. There's a streamer there that you follow. Oh, I wonder who that is. Um... <laughs> What's the shout out? I'll add one for Laura. It'll be like onion ring. <laughs> hey, Laura, do you actually have a chair? Yeah, I created one. Do you post on it? No, not yet. <laughs> That's exhilarating. <laughs> I love that. That's my new favorite adjective ever. <laughs> you feel intimidated by the mod attack? Uh, there's a lot of mods in the channel. What's your player? Who's all here? Uh, the pretty famous Laura channel is uh, Plankton Adventures. Yes. She could stream live from the field while she's collecting samples if they have internet wherever yes. she is. <laughs> uh, where is Laura from? Colombia. It's the not Colombia, but Colombia. It's really good, Laura. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> she's a South American, not Italian. Italian? No. What did they think you were the other day? French. French? I thought somebody said Jerusalem. Oh, Someone yes, said, also. Yeah, she's, she's Jerusalem. Yeah. <laughs> She is Jerusalem. You can't hear the SEM now? It's probably because uh, Mallory's eating bread next to it. I don't know. Cockanese diminuta? Yeah. Cockanese. It doesn't have the ring. It doesn't have to. I think it's a cockanese. What's my favorite diatom? Um, Tower Mind, my favorite diatom is always whatever diatom I most recently described. So uh, Peruscus now? Coruscus is my favorite diatom. It's actually on the stream. Uh, not right there, but... Uh, earlier it was. Earlier we had a picture of it. Um, chocolate zucchini bread is good. I'm like an infant. Uh, I'm like an Commander Shafard said, you should make tomato soup cake. It's delicious. 
One, uh, I, don't I don't like know. tomato soup. Oh. But Tropical maybe? He's from, Spanish. He's from um, he lives in Chicago, but he's from, I think he's from Mexico? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, just as I said. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're speaking Spanish at you. Yeah. Hi, Pacific. Uh, I love you. Laura can't uh, read what you're typing because I have the screen, but they're um, saying hi, Laura, and then uh, something. Then do you speak Spanish? Podemos hablar en español, sí, sí podemos. Uh, you come from Bogota. Bogota, yes, but my family is from Medellin, so a little bit of both. You're on the right. Yes, you're on the right continent. Uh, somebody's message got deleted. Oh boy. You're in trouble now. <laughs> Commander Shafar said love you too. Oh, we no, should, you don't understand should ban that account? Okay. It's so crowded in the lab? Well, it's just you can see all of us at the moment. You literally, it's so crowded. When I can, I want to get everyone in this room during one of your streams. It'll be on, when's the, when's the next stream after the program starts? When does the next stream start? Is that what you asked me? When is the next stream after Wednesday? Next Monday? Next Monday, yes. Or any time, actually. Look at the schedule over there. You see that? Whenever I want. This one's the no, one you told me was very rare. That's Anumastus Rostratum. It's not that rare. Okay. I mean, maybe uncommon. All right, thank you for the bread. Oh, you just came here to eat zucchini bread and leave? I didn't know the zucchini bread was here. It was just out of bonus. I just came to say goodbye. <laughs> Actually, I was going to walk in and just say full metal alchemist and then walk out. But I changed Are you an alchemist? Huh? Can you turn lead into gold? Yeah. Can you turn some lead um, targets into gold targets for our sputter coder then? Yeah. That's excellent news. I'll get right on that. Did Ooh, you I make made it slides? uglier. Make you slide or make you stubs like you asked for. What about the slides that were on the slide warmer? Cover slips that were on the slide one. Did you oh. make those? Yes. Okay. They're not, I mean, they're not all done. Those are like portions of the two different ones. Okay. I was just curious what you were doing. Yeah. I'm not demanding. I'm, I'm just, doing those. I... I'm not demanding you stick around and do them. I'm just no. asking what you're doing. I thought you, like, the, I finished a whole set. I'm like, I got horrible news. There's like 400. I mean, you could do 400 in a day. Yeah. I did 400 a day every time. You could probably fit 200 onto the slide warmer and then do them in the morning and then... 200 on the slide warmer? Easily. I'd say 100. I can do 100. 200, you're pushing it. Like, 40 takes up half. Unless you, like, put them so close. I'm covered in chocolate. There's, <laughs> a, there's a Clorox wipes I over there. I made it very chocolatey. So. Like, like, you made those Clorox like, wipes, so they might be kind of... I don't know. I made these. Oh, yeah, I did make these, didn't I? I... You know what? Oh my god, they're fine. They <laughs> no, it's fine. I'll just get everything dirty in the process. Don't worry. Okay. It's good. How's it going? Is it going good? I'm going to try to make a conversation as I'm leaving. I'm just trying to move my little dinosaur now. What? Come here! I'm just shredding them. There you go. They can see you. I just wanted you to know. I'll give them a little smile. It's like it never even happened. They're distracted by you and they're not paying attention to the gorgeous okay. diatom that we have. Well, I'll be gone in like two seconds. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not worried. Calm down, calm down. I'm not worried at all. No, they're, they're fighting with uh, a person in the channel who said something inappropriate. Okay, mood. Don't worry, I say that stuff out loud. See you next time. Bye. I didn't see what they wrote, but if you want to, you know, you want to manage people, you, that's why you got the sword. Just do your thing. Pacific Plankton? Pacific Plankton too. That's why I got all these swords. Yeah, she just ran out. I didn't even get a chance to tell her you said bye, Shafar. She probably has a hot date.
Yeah, the detail on this diatom is actually pretty amazing. And if we could see the outside of the diatom instead of the inside of the diatom, you'd probably be even more impressed because the pores on this thing are amazing on the outside. Why don't we look around and see if we can yeah, find yeah, an yeah. external view? If there's this one, it's likely. I mean, there's the other one, maybe. Odds are, we'll find an external view. Then we can get super close, take a super close photo. Of the pores? Whatever you want. Anomasus. Uh, Tying them out. What'd you say? Uh, Rostratum. <laughs> but you didn't put the R on it. Oops. Did I roll my R too hard and you didn't recognize it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> get in there with tweezers and flip it. Uh, if we could only. <laughs> There's a sort of a uh, central intelligence room for, I guess, mods and other people. You could put stuff in there if you wanted to, tropical. Any of the high ordered. I like this one, but it's... With star anise? Yeah, but it's really covered, I don't know. Yeah. If we had some tweezers and we could get in there and clean some of them off, it'd have to be really small tweezers. Are you going to go look for an animastus? What are you doing? <laughs> I, I was just curious what this little thing oh, was. It's something uh, in girl view. It might be an animastus. I wanted to see... Zoom in on it. Let's take a look. I get lost. So many diatoms. I don't think uh, that's it. Epithemia. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Bardic perspiration. <laughs> uh, just blow on it? Yeah, I mean, well, it's inside a vacuum, uh, so there's a slight problem with that. Can't really dust it off either. Um, we're kind of... This one is the same one, right? Yeah, also internal view, though. Ah. See the... Um, the bright line around mm -hmm. it? That's, That's the silica thickening mm -hmm. the part. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Sponge PQ. Yup. Another one. Yup. Pollen. This one? Yeah, and that other one on the, uh, like, 11 o'clock. This one? Yeah, no, there's three this, of them. Oh, yes. There's four uh -huh. of them. They're in a row, actually. Yep. Maybe we can get a nice picture. Which one's the prettiest? This one or this one? Uh, I think the this either one? that one or that one, yeah. I don't know, it's pollen, they never look too pretty. <laughs> Maybe not so close. Like uh, oh, you're talking to... Uh, okay. Uh, what's the sample coded with to reflect electrons? Um, well, they'll reflect electrons by themselves. Um, because the electrons uh, beam comes in and it sort of knocks electrons out. Um, the gold coat that's over top of them is not to help reflect electrons, but rather to uh, discharge them from the surface. So the coating is more uh, an attempt to disperse electrons than it is to actually reflect them. But same idea. Or similar this one's idea. the intermediate one? Yes. That's an external view. Oh, it's a Connect Four, exactly. We did win. We got a, a four in a row oh, yes. from one side. Did you play Connect Four when you were a kid? Um, I got to know it like when I was an adult. Basically. But I've played it. Are you a pro right now? <laughs> I don't know. If we put a 
connect for between the two of us who you think is going to win me or you i think you you have more <laughs> experience at it <laughs> is it a game of experience well, you have to be like I haven't smart played, about I it. I don't so. think I've played Connect Four in like twenty-five years. So. Oh, then we could have a fair. Yeah. Game. Now, if it was ping pong, who would win, me or you? You. Okay. I have horrible eye. Hand-eye coordination. Yes, mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I have a ping pong paddle in my office. We could go over to the rec center. Oh right my god, now. that would be really bad. <laughs> I've tried it, and I just can't. I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. I need more practice. You yeah, probably. I did play squash, but that was easier for me than ping pong. Squash? Why? Squash? I mean, the paddle's about the same size, and the ball doesn't bounce very much. No, the. It's like a tennis racket. Well, more like a badminton racket, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's a pretty pulling. I mean, it's pollen. When I when I was trying to decide what I wanted to study, pollen was not one of the things that I was thinking about, and I was like, it's just gross looking. <laughs> Some of them look pretty, though. Pine pollen doesn't. But um, I didn't want to work with them because, in part, uh, the processing requires that you use HF, and yes. uh, I don't want to work with chemicals that might kill me. When we processed pollen at my lab in Colombia, we would be dressed like astronauts, and then <laughs> exactly. no one could come into the like chamber where we were in working. Yeah. And you start and you have to finish basically because you have all this gear. Yeah, and it was pretty scary. It was like if you didn't take all the carbonates and then you put the acid, it's going to explode. And I was like, okay, oh my god. As opposed to what do we do in our lab, which is like, ah, we'll just squeeze a little of this in and stick it on a shelf and like come <laughs> back and like two weeks and it's done uh is laura in discord i don't think she's using the discord at no. least not yet uh i don't are we frozen i don't think we're frozen nope or i don't know the screen's not frozen i just think uh, the picture is done <laughs> pacific plankton says i have to get ready for a meeting you have way too many meetings pacific uh, I had a meeting today, and I'm done with them for at least a week. Make sure to stream the match. Yeah, you you think we should stream a ping pong match or a Connect Four match? <laughs> I'd rather stream the Connect Four. <laughs> Although, um, if people want to have a good time, then maybe the ping pong one. What about chess? Oh no. You don't want to play me in chess? No, because I'm really bad, and I have trouble remembering the rules. Oh. Oh, up here. I don't know if it's uh, flipped over the right way. It looks like maybe it's an inside view again. No, nope. that's the outside view. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, is squash against the wall like a tennis racket? Yes. Is squash is like racquetball, kind of? It's like racquetball. I'm not sure what are the differences, but it's not racquetball. No, the ball's different. It doesn't bounce as much. Um, let's see Commander Shafard says I bought a cayenne pepper energy drink and it's actually pretty tasty like a spicy cream soda that Ooh, it doesn't good. sound very good I know, I'm not into hot stuff I like a little bit like but hot and sweet mixed together sometimes is good I like red pepper flakes mm -hmm. on everything <laughs> but on everything? <laughs> on everything <laughs> <laughs> uh Let's see. Uh, Tropical Geek wants to know if you went to the University of Columbia. But uh, they asked the question in Spanish, so. This one. Which one? De que Universidad? De los Andes. La Universidad de los Andes. I don't know. I hope he's still here. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Spicy pepper in a carbonated beverage hits a really different, in a really different and strange way, yeah. What did you ask? What's going on? I don't know. I think they're asking a question about squash. Oh, okay. They want to know what the difference between squash and racquetball is, maybe? Oh, I don't, I'm not the person to ask because I'm not familiar the with The rules are different. 
racquetball also you can like um, you can hit it a lot harder like it but the stage is similar right so you can use the walls and everything it's, it's played in the same manner like in the same type of a room I mm -hmm, think is yeah. racquetball but the court is slightly different so the markings on the ground have to be different mm -hmm. I think I only played squash a couple of times. Uh, I used to play racquetball all the time. I did it for years, and I really liked squash it. Squash or racquetball? No, squash. Okay. I don't know racquetball. <laughs> but I played tennis when I was in high school a lot. And I tried um, it, and I just... Mm -mm. Well, I mean, the advantage of playing squash is that you play inside a room, so the ball's not going to go outside of the fence or whatever, right? Yeah, I it's don't hard know. to get the ball out of the room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can get it trapped in several places, <laughs> though. If you hit it weirdly enough, it will get I trapped. I suppose you probably could, but uh, a tennis ball—if you hit it, it, it'll just—it goes outside go. the fence. It'll just go forever, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Uh, Google says a racquetball is smaller rackets and a bouncier ball. Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. Uh, is SEM expensive to operate, or do they let you use it and observe random things you're just interested in? Um, Tower Mind, it's my SEM. Uh, I mean, I don't own it. I can't take it home. But uh, this is my lab. So nobody lets me do anything. I let other people do things. Um, and uh, if I want to look at random things on the SEM, that's what I'll do. Uh, same with my microscopes and anything else. Um, most of the time I use it for research purposes, um, but occasionally I will just stream things for fun, for science outreach. Um, I mean, we don't put things in there that could harm the instrument in any way. Uh, I'm very careful about maintaining the integrity of the instrument, but um, we put fun things in there occasionally, and we sometimes stream from the SEM into just chatting, and we put like, I don't know, skin samples, or hair samples, or whatever we wanted, bugs. Um, we had people send us, uh, Daisy D, sent, Miss Daisy D sent us um, Luna moths, and like the larva and the cocoon, but we still tried to make it educational. So um, generally speaking, even though we might be having fun, we still talk about like, you know, Demodex mites or tardigrades or whatever insects. We still sort of talk about it in an educational fashion. So I figure as long as it's science outreach, um, I think it's fine uh, for my, my lab. But uh, normally to use an SEM, to answer your question, is it expensive to operate? Not really. Um, but let me rephrase that. If you were to go like take samples that you wanted to have analyzed to an SEM lab, very likely they would charge you anywhere from $50 an hour to $120 an hour to use the instrument. So we've been streaming for two and a half hours. Uh, we've racked up $125 uh, of charges if we were on somebody else's instrument. Um, but um, because it's my lab and it's my instrument and I know how to run it, um, really all we're using is a little bit of the supplies. And what I mean by that is um, the nitrogen gas, which was in the tank that I showed you, costs a little bit of money. It actually costs more money to rent the tank than it does for the nitrogen gas itself. So they just charge us for having the tank here. So if it's an empty tank or if it's a full tank, they still charge us. Um, so in respect to that, there's not a lot of cost associated with the nitrogen gas aspect, or rather we need to have the gas here whether we're using it or not. And the Unosha? It's the Unosha. Well, the first one. Uh, I think it's Perupta, or something close to Perupta. Uh, the other cost associated with the SEM is the sputter coating, which is putting the gold on the actual sample. Um, that costs, the individual targets cost about $800 to buy, but um, we use that usually for a whole year. So prorated over the number of hours that we use the instrument for, it's it comes out good. to be pretty cheap. And then the only other cost associated with actually running it that's not a, like electricity is um, the 
um, the filament, the tungsten filament that I was talking about before. And it cost about $60 for one of the filaments. And they also last us for about 400 hours on this machine on average. And so um, that cost also ends up being very small per hour. Usually when you go to a lab and they're charging you an hourly rate, what they're charging you for is not the cost of the instrument, but replacing parts and maintenance and um, potentially they might want to save up their money to buy another SEM to replace the SEM that they have. Um, so that, that's their cost usually. If you take care of an instrument like this, it'll probably last 20 years. Um, and we've been taking pretty good care of ours. And um, I had a couple of years of service maintenance that were included in the grant that I wrote for the SEM. And we've been able to cover the cost of it using that for now. So it means that the maintenance costs haven't really been very high for us, but um, usually what I do is I write grants and they'll be something unrelated to the SEM, but we need to use the SEM to analyze the diatoms, for example. And I will include a cost in my grant that covers some of the use for the SEM. So for me, for using the SEM here, in general for research purposes, I usually charge about a uh, myself about um, two thousand dollars a year to use it uh, which is still much less relative to the number of hours that I use it but I charge it to my grants and then I have to write a grant to compensate for that usually so if I don't have grants coming in or other people don't have grants that I can charge it to then usually I have to eat that cost or I have to find some other way to make it up hopefully we get that one so we can yeah yeah, so, uh, you know, people basically who use the SEM, we charge some money to if that's not my lab. So if you came here from outside and you weren't a collaborator with me on something um, and you wanted to use the SEM, I probably would charge you $35 an hour to use my machine. And I'd have to sit here and babysit you. So, um, that was a big, long answer to your question. <laughs> Uh, oh, we got raided? Is that what that was? You know, Sha. Prerupta, I think. P R A E R U P T A. Like that? P R A E. P R A A E. E. Rupta. R U P T A. I think. Oh, wow. Uh, I can't tell if that tricks. Tricks Megustus? Magistus? Is rating? Or are they just hosting? Either way, thank you. Um, first time here, followed from the plankton lady. Oh, yeah. Uh, Pacific plankton, I think you mean? The plankton lady. Uh, thank you for the sh uh, shouting out the rest of the squad there, or the microscope squad. Pacific plankton, yeah. Okay, good. Um, Pacific is going to be on tonight for anybody who's interested in seeing her stream. Um, she starts at midnight Eastern time and streams till two in the morning Eastern time and I am her moderator So I will be there hanging out Potentially talking potentially just a uh, hanging out in the chat room. This one's an you No, that's I think a pinularia, but it's like 3d like oh, I'm the seeing like the girdle inside. Band. It, it's pushed into the girdle band. Uh -huh. That's the girdle band coming out in us. I wish this wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think it's a good picture with this one. Uh, you... Yeah, we probably can't rotate that out of the way. I mean, I could just do this, Try but... Try turning it and see if it will still be blocking okay. it or I'm not. I'm at zero, and I need it like this. Yeah, so like 40 degrees. Let's try it. No, a little more. Or less? More? Um, well, I think that thing is still in the way, either yes. way. We could tilt it. I'd have to do some things. No, no. <laughs> we are not doing it. <laughs> We're not tilting it, okay. Nope. <laughs> not yet. Uh-uh. Uh, yeah, thank you for... Yeah, I have a knowledge fellowship uh, command there. Thank you for that. And Zatimis, hello. Uh... How much electricity does the SEM take? I don't know. Uh, it's running a pump and uh, two computers 
and then it's making an electron charge. I don't, I don't have an electric meter on it. I have no idea. <laughs> Probably a fair amount, um, but it's integrated into my overhead costs for the university. So, and hello, uh, dangling. How are you doing? Uptime. I don't think I have that as a command. This one's sorry. Oh, I do. Yes. Epithemia. And Koroskos? I think it's oh, did, mm, No, it's Koroskos. What's the other one? I mean, My neutralis is another option, but I think it's too big. And this one is the... Intermediate. Intermediate one. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're taking a picture of these three. Uh, not rated, but hosted. That's fine. I'm pretty far behind. Oh, how far are you behind us? Maybe about four seconds. I just don't have any of the sounds turned on, so I can't hear when it, it sends me notifications. And if I'm not looking at the screen, because I'm kind of, you know, helping Laura and chatting with her. So. You have to wake up for work at 12 a.m. Oh, that's terrible. That's a terrible time to start work. Uh, Dangling wants you to say something in Spanish. I guess you're a pet now. <laughs> Well, what do you want me to say? Uh, tell her her hair looks pretty. I, I don't know what, what she looks like. What's the name? Oh, uh, Dangling. It says breaded shrimp, but her name, we call her Dangling. Uh, you can call her breaded shrimp if you want to. <laughs> dangling? Or her real name is uh, a secret. <laughs> but I know that as well, because she hangs out. So we're telling her her hair is pretty? Yeah, tell her her hair is pretty. Okay, um, tu pelo es muy bonito. See? There you go. Dangling. <laughs> uh, why do we call her Dangling? Because her name was Dangling Uvula when she first entered the channel. And uh, she changed it to Braided Shrimp from Dangling Uvula. Well, so. that one's prettier than Dangling Uvula. Yes. Braided shrimp, I don't know that that's very uh, pretty. <laughs> but it's... We should just call her shrimpy. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to call you shrimpy from now on, dangling. Camarones yeah. empanizados, yes? <laughs> that's what breaded shrimp would be in Spanish. <laughs> what is it? Camarones empanizados, this okay. one. Oh, okay. I see. Robert knows. Yes. You will unfollow me if I call you shrimpy? <laughs> uh, what if I call you bready? Um, or what if I call you camarones? Wait, which one is camarones? Is that the shrimp? Yes. That's breaded, right? That's yes. Shrimp. Camarones? How do you say that? Camarones. Camarones. Uh-huh. Okay. I have a nice tongue twister that involves shrimp. Oh, do you? Yes. Will you say it? Tengo un barco camaronero en camaronamelo. I don't know what any of that means. It's like I have a shrimp boat on shrimping. Okay. I guess it would you be... You have a shrimp boat on shrimping? Like... For shrimping. It's a... Sh um, I have a boat for catching shrimp. Oh, yeah. Um, and then the other word, I guess, is made up. It's like, I don't want the shrimp there anymore, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was making up tongue twisters the other day because uh, one of the other streamers I, I'm friends with, Del Maximum, has a button you can make him say tongue twister mm -hmm. and then he was talking and he was saying a bunch of words that were kind of close to tongue twisters already and so I just took some of the words and I made them into tongue twisters and then I forced him to say them. Uh. I got a really good one that I think he stumbled over quite a bit um, but I used to have to do tongue twisters for to prepare myself when I was getting ready to speak in public and so we always had you make a proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee pot. It's a proper cup of coffee? You make a proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee pot. You make a proper <laughs> cup of coffee in a copper, copper coffee, coffee pot. pot. You make a proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee pot. Okay, Perfect. not so bad. Yeah, I like that one. 
And it just ends up sounding like blah, 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 blah. But uh, I can say it really quickly because I'm used to that one. Oh, there's a whole bunch of shrimping conversation here <laughs> that I'm missed in. Uh, the Tropical Geek says, uh, Tango on Barco Camarono. Is this uh -huh. the tongue twister? Tengo un barco camaronero, es un camarón. Namelo. I say it a little different, the last part. Oh, uh, okay. I have a shrimping boat. Uh huh. <laughs> How do I ban the streamer from his stream? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in the theater, it was taught to speak with a pencil under the tongue. Oh, that sounds gross. A little bit. Uh, There's a good one with shellfish, yeah. I did a good one. for. I wrote them into my Discord if you want to go there. Peter Pan peanut butter is the peanut butter picky people pick. Oh, yeah. I know your name. Uh breaded shrimp oh it's to force the enunciation oh that's a good idea except for I think pencils are kind of dirty so I wouldn't want to put a pencil under my tongue you mean like like under your tongue or like under your like in your mouth under your tongue I mean it's a pencil people's hands are on the germs and stuff we're in COVID times here, Tropical, <laughs> come on. Uh, hello, Devil Mrs. J, by the way. Uh, I know where my tongue is. Uh, let's see, M-R-S-J, like that. Get a new tongue? I've only got one tongue. I should put on my tag at the bottom, also Spanish, when you're here, <laughs> and we can co-stream. I'll say things in English, you can say things in Spanish. <laughs> and then everyone can be involved. And I won't know what you're saying. <laughs> Unless it's a uh, shrimp, I've learned one word. Camarón. Yeah. Actually, you'd think I would know that one, because I mostly know the Spanish food. Uh-huh. That's the only things I know. But I don't eat seafood, so, you know. <laughs> Maybe other types of I haven't learned the food. seafood words. <laughs> yes. Uh, you mean a fresh pencil out of the box? Who puts pencils in a box? I don't know why your host button disappeared. Uh, Tower Mind wants to know, can we see bacteria or viruses under this microscope? Um, yes, but they'd be very small um, for viruses. They're usually right at the limit of what we could see. So like people ask me about the coronavirus all the time and I would say probably I could see it. It's a large virus. It's in the range of like 100 to 300 nanometers, but it would just be like a little blob. It wouldn't look very interesting. And um, uh, and I think visible, I yes, but not. I don't exciting. think every type of virus you could see. No, a lot there of them are, are ones smaller. That have like um, lipid coating, mm -hmm. like for. They would just look like a blob, and most so of them I probably would know. not be very interesting. Um, a lot of times the amphora. Um, a lot of times the bacteria is the same way. It's just like a blob. Um, it's not super interesting. So, yes, but do we want to? Probably not. Um, also, that would require us to prepare the samples differently. Yes, because if they're soft, like right. that's what I'm not... Yeah, we got rid of all the organic matter before we started, so... It, um, uh, bacteria would dissolve. Yeah, a lot of it would.
Dangling says, I can say bad words in Spanish and you wouldn't know. Well, you can't say them. I mean, you could type them. Um, also, I used to live in New Mexico and my landlady's boyfriend, she was an older lady, but she had a boyfriend who lived with her. You know, I don't think they were married, but uh -huh. he was Hispanic and he taught me all the swear words. So, <laughs> so you would know. I would know. I mean, he only spoke in swear words mostly. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. Tractable Geek says they had two roommates from Colombia and then something in Spanish. I took Spanish perfectly something from, they're from Puerto Rico. Uh. Uh, and then Bread Shrimp says, I couldn't even spell Espanol. I can. But you don't have the correct letter here, right? Well, in Word I do. Okay. You hit uh, Control Shift and then you hit that uh, tilde button. And oh. Then, and then N. Uh huh, yes. Because I have to write El Nino all the time. My uh, computer has the correct letter. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> you just have a button with yes. it. Well, I don't know. Well, then you have an extra button. Whether yeah. you take a button away or is there an extra button? Is there? A, there's an extra button, but then all of this has a different mm -hmm. order. Uh, my iPad has an international keyboard. I can click on it, and, and then, then it gives me all uh -huh. the letters. Nice. So uh, this picture is really ugly. It's ugly. Yes. I think you mean the diatom has a lot of clay. <laughs> Uh, one of the roommates was from Medellin and the other from Bogota. Uh, how do you coat the samples? We use a sputter coater, Rex. Um, it's earlier I did a little tour of the lab. It's over there. Um, and uh, it has a, a piece of metal. We put a charge through it. It creates a plasma cloud and then it basically coats the sample in whatever the um, plasma cloud is made of, in this case, gold. So it also happens in a vacuum uh, with a little hole in it to let the uh, air in. We're under attack from the blob. Is that what you just heard? I don't know. I don't know what you mean. I mean, if we get attacked, by, all kinds of bad things happen while I'm in the SEM lab uh -huh. and I have no idea. Anything could happen. We could be under attack. Um, when the Capitol building was under attack earlier this year, I was here on the SEM, and I had no idea what was going on. And Until later? The, the girls were here in the room with me, and they didn't even say anything about it. They were just like, S something's happening, we don't want to talk about it on the stream. So, you know. I know we've seen this one, but I can't remember. It's a uh, Playtessa Zeichlerite. Like and that's... <laughs> I need to review my... Platesis. Yeah, well. Uh, Tropical Geek says they don't have that symbol here, but H is the substitute for N heat. Hi, Anna. We're still here. Um, it's almost 5 o'clock, though. I don't know how much longer we'll be here. Eventually, I gotta go home. <laughs> Um, that one, Mr. J, I can understand a lot more Spanish than you can actually speak. Keyboard is correct with the correct letters. Sputter coder Rex, you haven't heard of that dinosaur yet? That would be a good one. Uh, sputter, cor sputter coder Saurus Rex. LL is one letter that sounds like Y in Spanish. I know that. Is this a freshwater sample from nearby? No, it's a, a sample from California. And um, it's a freshwater lake though. And um, these are surface samples. And for some reason, whenever we stream, Laura only ever looks at one <laughs> sample. We have seven mounted samples <gasps> in the SEM at once. And we've done three streams like this, and one time she looked at seven, one time she looked at one, and one time she looked at three. <laughs> so we still have four samples to look at, and I haven't had to do anything, uh, you know, 
to make new samples for a while, which is great because that's <laughs> a lot of work I don't have to do. Um, I need to find the samples for Wednesday somehow before Wednesday gets here. Which um, ones? We're going to look at Ashfall, um, which is a state park in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a, a place where there's um, like rhinosaurs and all kinds of other animals were found at what they think was a watering hole. Oh, wow. Well. And, uh, and they collected diatoms from the water or what they think was the water that the watering hole was there for. And so those are Miocene age. And then there's some samples in an adjacent place called Grove Lake, which is uh, another formation um, where there's diatomites. And those are about six million years old. So the, wow. the ones from um, Ashfall are about 10-ish million years old. And the ones from Grove Lake are about six million years old. So we'll be looking at some really old stuff um, with those guys, uh, Joe and... Um, and Mark, my colleague and former student in reverse order. And um, I mean, other people can come hang out. We might be, we might have other people in the lab, but they'll, they'll be here through Zoom, so. Uh, was it shipped to me? Yes. Uh, mean Machine Rex says, is there a difference between Spanish and Spain and Mexico? Oh, no, they said there's a difference between Spanish and Spain and Mexico. I mean, I think it's just like uh, dialect, right? Yes, different accents, different yeah. words, but... Their tongue twisters have a different type of shrimp boat in them. <laughs> uh, was it shipped to me? Well, from Lexington, Kentucky to here, yes. Uh, and hi, Luke, how are you doing? I didn't like this one too much clay. Yeah, I'm that's a lot of clay in that picture. I don't like it. I want to create a bacteriophage cocktail so I can use it as a mouthwash and never have to brush my teeth again. What do you think about that idea? <laughs> Not very safe. I don't know what I to tell know. you. Maybe. Shrink. As simple as scooping up water to get new samples. It can be. Um, more frequently we scoop up mud. Um, but. You know, there's the density of diatoms in a typical scoop of water is pretty low. So if you're going to scoop water, probably you need to use like a milk jug and scoop Filter like a gallon of after. water. And then what I would do is let it settle for like two days and then drain all the water off of it. So there's just a little bit at the bottom where all of the diatoms would have settled. Um, or you could just click the bit of material from the mud itself, depending on whether you want to look at living diatoms or dead diatoms or some combination. Um, in the sediment, you'll get a mix of things that have fallen through the water column and are dead or uh, things that are living on the surface and uh, in the surface of the sediments themselves. Um, 100% it's not you. I don't think Micah's here. Okay. No, no, Luke and Micah are not the same. Um, oh, your family's from Lexington? Well, that's cool. Yeah, Micah's, he's off doing some sort of programming uh, cheese, or I guess sometimes it's not cheese, uh, from factories and he's out of town. So he's either traveling or he's maybe still back at work. Um, they use diatom shells in tooth powder. The tooth powder, they do. Um, they have uh, like the natural toothpaste have diatomite in them. Among other things like beer filters, pool filters, dynamite, hand warmers. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that people use diatoms for. Twitch is twitching somehow. Is it? I don't know. It looks fine for me. I mean, I'm watching my own stream, so... It seems okay on my end. Are we stopping at five? Yes. 
Okay. I don't know. You don't know. I feel like I need to get home. Yeah, eventually. yeah. Especially if I'm going to stream something from the light microscope. Ah, yes. In the same day. I mean, how many things could I do in one day that people really want to see? <laughs> but uh, I like to do a little microscope streaming on Monday evening. And then right, you know, like from maybe 10 or 10.30 to midnight. So I'll probably be back on looking at something. I got to find some samples to look at, though. So I got to find like a lake or a pond or a ditch. Stir anise, right? That's a star anise, yeah. <gasps> you almost knocked the microphone over. But I saved it. Yeah. We could have had a really loud ASMR experience yes. for you. <laughs> Instead, you got to have uh, Laura <laughs> handle the microphone. <laughs> Oops. The emote menu is messed up. Um, I don't know. My emote menu looks okay. I got this one and this one and birds and some mustaches and look at these cool diatom emotes I got. You're There's sending this? One. Boom, look at ah. that. Um, and I've got these ones over here, the secret m secret menu ones from BTTV. There's this one. I got a Gavinula. <laughs> Don't start ASMR. I was going to tell you, Breaded Shrimp likes to listen to people eat food. Oh. Um, and Laura. There's wants a to possible subscriber Laura wants for to, me. Laura wants to start a stream about onion rings. How do you feel about people eating onion rings dangling? <laughs> because you should give her a follow. She's planning on starting a stream about eating onion rings. <laughs> Mostly about how they taste, but. Yes. Uh, but I think also there, she probably could accommodate your lunching proclivities. Okay, so I'm stopping what? now. Miss Daisy D is raiding me. <gasps> but now you have to send everyone over someone el uh, yeah, somewhere well else. We can no? hang out for a little while longer. It's fine. I was going to raid Miss Daisy D, though, so that kind of ruined my plan. Um, Do you want to raid? I don't know. I was thinking Miss Daisy D because I saw she was streaming, but Jolkson's streaming, so we can raid him. It'll be okay. Okay. Hello, Miss Daisy D. Look what I've got—a Daisy command. Daisy. There you go. Uh, we have a special command just for Daisy. And um, earlier today, we were talking about hatching the um, larva, which we still had in the refrigerator. And I told Mallory we should just let it fly around the lab, and she didn't like that idea. So, um, you had to eat dinner. Oh, okay. Um, Laura doesn't care. Laura would just stay on the SEM if I let her. She would, <laughs> she's like, she's transfixed, I think. No. At five is okay. Well, it's already five. <laughs> Do you want to? It's fine. Send everyone. We'll send somebody when well, like maybe fifteen minutes. Okay. We'll let you take a couple more pictures <laughs> and then uh, call it. She's been giving me hints that she wants to go, and I don't get it. I don't think that's true. What are you having for dinner, Miss Daisy? Um, I'm going to bring in my my butterfly cage tomorrow, and uh, we're going to let that uh, little little guy hatch. How long does it take I've seen take it. Daisy sometimes streams the moss hatching, and um, she did that about, I don't know, three weeks ago or something. She had like a live stream where she just put it a camera at the containment mm -hmm. things, and then she had like a whole little tray of them. They all hatched. I think maybe it took maybe three hours for them to work themselves up and climb up the sticks and put their wings out and kind of dry out. So h how, like, in how many days are we expecting the one in the lab to? I don't know. Probably tomorrow if we take it out of the refrigerator and, uh, wow. and, and that let week? it hatch. Yeah, probably. That's a gumphanema, by the way. Yes. Uh... It's a Hispanic thing. 
What He's asking about whether or not you really want to go eat dinner and want to get off the stream and you're just trying to... Um, oh, it's too early to eat dinner. See? Exactly. It's five, she's not even hungry. Daisy says they're a little uh, unpredictable. Um, I also should give out a shout out to Cold Ham, who came in with Daisy D, sort of a partner in crime. And uh, welcome in, Cold Ham. If you uh, if you like cool game streams, you should check out Cold Ham. And if you like art streams, which I do, um, you should check out Miss Daisy D. She draws stuff live on Twitch. Sometimes she just does her homework, but I think the semester's over. So maybe she's going to get back to doing some art for us. And, um... They need about a week to a week and a half of nice weather before they hatch. But if, what if we're taking them out of the refrigerator? Then how long? Breaded Shrimp says, if you pickle the onions before frying, it's good. I don't know, <laughs> how do you feel about pickled onions being fried? I haven't tried that kind, but... <laughs> you haven't? Have you tried fried pickles before? Yes, How once. do you feel about fried pickles? I thought they were very tasty. I, I was like, oh my god. Because like I'm used to pickles being cold, mm -hmm. and I don't know. But it wasn't too bad. A little bit of ranch or something? I don't like ranch. You don't like ranch dressing? No. I don't know how you're going to fit in in Indiana. <laughs> Everybody just puts it on everything here. I don't know. It's just too much for me. And buffalo, I didn't like either. Mm. That's just blue cheese. It's got some really cool pores on that company. Yes. It's a nice shot. Mean Machine Rex says, I draw, but they don't have fiber broadband yet. Mm. I do some drawing, but I haven't stream it ever because it's kind of boring. It's like science drawing. My drawings aren't good, so... No? No. Miss Daisy says she doesn't like ranch either. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if I had to choose for like which kind of Dorito I like better, it's always the ranch ones. But I mean, Doritos are also kind of like, eh. The taco flavored ones probably rank actually above the ranch flavored ones. I haven't had the taco ones. I've had the ranch ones. We don't have those in Colombia. We just have the regular. Just have nachos? Yeah. You don't yeah. have ranch flavored ones? No. Yeah. No, that sauce doesn't. It's not you don't there. have a sauce like that? No. Do you have some sauce that we don't have? Yes. What kind of Doritos do they have in Colombia? Oh, no, not for Doritos. Oh, okay. We just have the regular Doritos. Just nacho. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dangley says, if you don't like ranch, I should kick you out. Oh. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't care if she likes ranch or not. Yeah, it's not the best. I don't know. We're not going to have a party where we eat ranch dressing or anything. Okay, good. <laughs> we will have a party, though. That's going to happen sometime soon. The kids come back on Wednesday. The kids. I love so, that. So, uh, you know, we'll probably have a party next week. Maybe nice. this weekend. I don't know. We'll have to look and see what the weather's like. This weather should, um, this weekend should be nice. Mm. Or is the rain coming? I don't know. It keeps changing. Yeah, it was supposed to be like thunderstorms all week, and then I looked no, and it was it's like, not well, it's not thunderstorms. Like that, yeah. Sunday's supposed to be sunny. Saturday's supposed to be partly cloudy. Basically, after Wednesday, the thunderstorms stop until next Wednesday, next Tuesday. Okay. So it is like nice weather. Yeah. Tonight's supposed to be rainy. Yes. I don't see any thunderbolts, but... Uh, if there's thunder, I might do a night stream. Is thunder and lightning? Mm. Uh, do 
did we get a Mallory stream? Mallory was on earlier. She came in, she ate some banana bread, or no, uh, some... Zucchini bread. Zucchini bread, and then she left. And she didn't even eat the zucchini bread into the microphone or anything. <laughs> so, uh, it seemed like she had something going on, you know. She just came to say bye, and yeah, then she ran to into the bread, so... Yeah. But she started today at like one o'clock and she left at like three thirty, so it's not like she was here for very long. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> uh let's see. This is uh Laura Sivienis uh Chicago Avisa Yo Vivo Aka. Ooh, super. I don't know, what's that? They live in Chicago, you can come visit? Yep. Like if you're ever in Chicago, let me know. I can just like <laughs> guess what it says. What do I need to r learn other languages? <laughs> if I know every third word, I probably could figure out what the sentence is about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tapatio Doritos are your favorite all time. Okay. The idea of putting flavors on all on things is American. Yeah. Oh, they said they're vaccinated. They can come. I mean, you could come hang out with us here. We have a party. Uh, Cold Ham says, best Dorito flavor, Mountain Dew flavor. Oh, my God, no. Is that a flavor? If that exists, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> uh, oh, during the party, I guess, Mallory, she would come to the party, probably. We'll probably do outside. We'll have an outside party with the... That's actually really nice. Um, we'll play uh, Coop. Which is an outdoor game that I that I um, I made I crafted. We could do a little outdoor stream, watch birds, play in my yard, eat whatever food, cook out food. Yeah, Mallory was a did she did a Discord stream the other day. Uh, she did some painting for us. That everybody's fighting over who should who you should come hang with. <laughs> Braided shrimp says hang with her. Tropical geek. They are all fighting over you. Well, where's this shrimp lady? Texas. That's a little further away than Chicago, but we can visit everyone. <laughs> I'm Texas, not opposed to some Texas travel. Texas is a long drive. Yeah, Chicago yeah. is a three and a half hour drive. We could get to Chicago. If we left right now. By like around eight, right? Eight or nine. Depends on who's driving. I drive like an old lady. <laughs> I just too. drive the speed limit, so. Did you get your license yet? No, I had a problem. I was planning on going At tomorrow. Field. Yes, very pretty. No? Nicely done. <sighs> I don't know what that species is. Okay. We uh, can go home now if you want. Tropical uh, Pacific and I also know uh, bread shrimp, so, and we actually hang out with bread shrimp <laughs> more frequently. We played Minecraft together. We're like this. <laughs> I don't think I denied anybody. I don't know what you're talking about. Really, I feel like Tropical and Bread and Shrimp should hang out. <laughs> they both speak Spanish. They both want someone to come visit them. Well, uh, I feel like I'm in the middle, so if you want to meet here... Yeah, oh, they could come <laughs> visit works. us. They could yeah. both come. That'd be nice. We're going to uh, capture one more photo. Okay. So make it a good one. We should have just done the last one. I'm seeing this Molly one. one. Let's see what this one is. And then... Oh, I feel like I already took a picture of this one now. You have. You'll take Mallory. I mean, I feel like that's a downgrade, but okay.
Oh, it's going to be a fight for who's followed me longer. This will be good. Except for Brady Trim changed their name. I don't know. Does it count? We have a Twitch baby. Who gets custody of the Twitch baby? It's 12 days old and 20 hours. Yeah. <laughs> What's your followage, breaded shrimp? Oh, look at that. You lose by eight days, Tropical. I think because it's at a weird angle, it's going to be blurry. I'm not following Diatom's attack. It's so weird. Ooh. Is this one a fight alert? Oh, what was the thing we said would be blurry? It was a uh, Lindavia of some sort. I didn't look closely at it. Sorry. Is this a fight uh, alert? Yeah, that's a fight alert. I think. Okay. We are making this one the last one. This one? We stop in on Nitzia? Yes. We, oh, it's not a Nitzia, is it? It's a Fragularia, no? No, I think it's Triblianella. Oh, see a new one and everything. I think it's Tribly Nella. For most We're having a fight who's followed me the longest, it looks like maybe Dangling is winning. By eight days for most people. You get me an audience. I mean... You guys don't need to fight over who's the best follower. Are we taking the picture? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, this is the part where I tell people thanks for hanging out and uh, fighting over who gets to spend time with Laura. <laughs> and uh, it's been fun. And uh, we're going to, you know, go raid somebody. And I think the most logical person in our list of people to raid is Jolkson, who's actually doing more microscope stuff. They're playing with agar. Let's see what that means. They're another microscope. Oh, that's a commercial. We've got to wait. They're another microscope streamer. They look at lake samples and uh, water samples and look at microscopic organisms. And they're part of my little squad list, so I feel like maybe we should rate them. Um, also freckled science, but uh, I feel like Jilkson needs the audience more. And thanks to everybody for hanging out, and um, thanks to Laura for running the SCM while I moderated my own channel and interacted with everybody <laughs> and taking some great pictures for us. And uh, they're speaking in Spanish at you. Poder Hispano Laura. Oh, which one is it? Ah, Poder Hispano. Ah, <laughs> yes. And, um, oh yeah, they're oh, looking there you at, go. see, they're looking at microscope stuff. They've got a ciliate on there right now. And there's a little diet on Yes. This one is also, yeah. no? A bunch of live diatoms. So you can't lose with microscope streams. And I'm going to raid them. Raid. Jolkson. Everyone just gets sent there? Or? Yeah, we shove them all over there. Uh -huh. All of my viewers become Jolkson's viewers. Nice. So thanks everybody for hanging out. Um, unfortunately, Jolkson doesn't have a Laura. <laughs> Um, he's just going to have to entertain you, or she is just going to have to entertain you with um, microscope stuff. Microscope organisms. It'll be great, and um, you should give them a follow. They're uh, they're fun. They look at microscope stuff for a long time, and um, we'll do that.
And I'll probably be back on later tonight doing the same thing Jolkson's doing, but looking at some other samples. And uh, again, I won't have Laura. It'll just be boring old me. <laughs> um, and then we'll probably raid Pacific Plankton tonight. So you should also check out Pac. She's right there. She's out earlier collecting uh, plankton for you to see later tonight. So looking forward to that as well. Okay, that's it. Well, Bye. I'll hit a button and then we'll all we'll all take off. I'm cutting off often for you. Sorry about that. It's not my fault. Okay. Bye. That's our our goodbye wave. Then, What's the name? Uh, I think it's Triblianella. Ah, from yes, 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 yes. I don't know the species name. Well, I've seen the Formosa one, so.